Everybody, did you hear that? Yep, thank you. Rochester Stockbridge Unified District mm -hmm. Board of School Directors special meeting, Tuesday, January 12th, 2021. I'm getting used to that. 6 p.m. via Google Meet agenda. We've called to order uh, significant adjustments to the agenda. Uh, we need a, um, an executive session at the end to talk about some of the details of the negotiations with the Town of Rochester Select Board uh, and, and new information we've just received from our lawyer. Uh, I also, this is not, the discussion items is not in the order that I sent it in, so we're going to have to juggle around. I want to get to consultation with lawyer first, so that's going to become 3-1. Uh, and I want that to ride into uh, the amendment. And then we're going to get after the amendment is all dealt with um, and hopefully voted on. I'd like to get that done first while we're fresh. And then we'll go on to the other recommended uh, recommendations or the action items and then the future action items and then the pending items. We'll go through all of them tonight. But I feel like with Dina here, we want to talk about this item first. So 3-1 will be consulting with a lawyer on the amendment. And so any other questions e about it? Yeah, Dina? <clears throat> Ethan, two things. One is Carl has his hand up, and the second oh, yeah. one is, is that there should, there should be a motion to amend oh, the yeah. agenda. Oh, okay. We've never done it that way. Good enough. We'll do it. I move that the agenda be uh, altered by moving 3-4 to 3-1 and renumbering the rest of those and by adding an executive session at uh, 6. We'll put it between 6 and 7 to make that 7. Could I have a motion to do that, please? Oh, Carl, raise your hand. Yeah, go ahead, Carl. Uh, can I request that uh, 3.1, the consultation with the lawyer, be in, exec be in executive session? Well, we've already talked with her at length in a public meeting um, on okay. these topics. Okay. I just, uh, I, 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 you know, it's, it is, it is a sensitive subject and, um, you know, uh, sometimes we want to talk, uh, we want to talk in, in, in executive session uh, well, with what, our Yeah, what I've heard is that um, yeah, as I say, because we already did talk about it. It's already public. It's already out there. Um, and all of that, that, That's fine. I have no problem okay. speaking in public. The Great. Keynote. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion to, um, to adjust the agenda as suggested? So moved. By second. Megan. Second. By Jenny. Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. Welcome, both of you. Um, good. All right. Well, then let's get to this. Um, would it be useful to look at the amendment and ask questions from it? Or do you have some general questions? Those of you who wanted to talk to our lawyer, um, uh, do you want to start off with that? Carl, raise your hand. I see it. Um, yeah, I, I, I wanted to to understand specifically, I think part of um, uh, what 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 uh, confused me so much at, at our at our meeting last week was that my recollection and understanding of, of, of numerous conversations during the course of the developing of the of the merger agreement and then uh, post the merger agreement was that while there could be while there could be a requirement that, for example. Um, uh, a certain number of board member board members come from a certain uh, uh, from from one town or the other. That because it's a unified district, all the votes have to be taken in a unified manner. Um, the same with bonding. We cannot um, we cannot have uh, we can only bond as as a as a combined district. We could not have a bond article that was only voted on and paid for by Rochester to cover Rochester buildings. Um, we could and 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 and, and uh, uh, similarly in Stockbridge because again the the rationale that that that, that we were given was that um, 
it has to be, you know, because it's a unified district, everyone in, in, in the district gets to vote on things. So I'm curious um, why my misunderstanding is, is, is so big. And then secondly, um, does that then also mean that I misunderstood the issue around bonding? Could we also be amending the mergers of agreement, the merger of agreement to allow there to be a bond that was voted on and paid for by all, all towns in the district? an option to have a bond that is uh, voted on and paid for by only the uh, residents of Stockbridge um, that would concern Stockbridge uh, located property and a bond and a bond option that would uh, only be voted on by Rochester residents that would concern Rochester situated property and would only be paid for by Rochester residents. That was one of the things that we really thought we wanted to do at the beginning in the, in, in the articles of agreement when we were first talking about it. Um, because the concept of Stockbridge pays for Stockbridge, Rochester pays for Rochester, um, and we were told that 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 you know no no you have to you have to vote as as uh, you know you have to vote as in, in, in a unified manner because you're a unified district. Would you like me to respond to that? I think yep. that's why I'm here. Correct. Yes. Um, exactly. <laughs> Carl, those are actually very good questions. So. One is that no, for a bond issue, that's different. Um, the issue is, and I put up on the screen, there, there are two specific parts of Title 16 which talk about election of, of board of directors. Uh, there's the one for your initial board, and then there's uh, 706K, which talks about your election of district officers after your initial board was seated. Um, you can, in fact, um, it's interesting when you look at the one for the initial board of directors, it says nothing within this uh, provision shall limit um, doing it at large. So there's an assumption of when you initially do it. That you would do it separate. That you would, you would do it separately. Mm -hmm. um, you can amend under Title 16 under the Union School District um, provisions under Title 16 you can in fact elect your directors, nominate and elect them from the town to represent the town into the union school district. What I pointed out to the committee, how you're set up now makes that very difficult if you want to do that. Because you do things in a non COVID year by floor meeting. Mm -hmm. While it's doable, it's an unwieldy beast to do it by a floor meeting, right? You do all of your business by floor meeting. So you can, in effect, modify that. The bond, the bond issue is different because what you're talking about in, within the bond issue, within the statute itself, talks about how it, it's to be voted on. And you're talking about property, which I also had a brief discussion, I think by email about some confusion of some of the articles of agreement, the properties, so the Stockbridge School and the Rochester School are properties of the Union School District. Mm -hmm. They are not properties of individual towns and it's not a representation issue. So um, I, I think your questions are very good. I will say that I think there are more union school districts who do the nominate from the nominate from the individual town and then at large. You can in fact do nominate at large and vote at large. So there are different ways that you can in fact do it. So this is, I would say, not a standard that you would find. Uh, it, it's not a frequent occurrence that the, it's done this way. Um, I know there was some confusion about whether or not um, one of your uh, other union school districts within uh, the SU does, does it this way. They do not. Um, First Branch, I think, was brought up to me. First Branch does it where they nominate by town and then do at we, large. We, we have, I've, I've seen, uh, one of our committee members shared with us the section of Granville, Hancock, Bethel, Royalton, and Chelsea Tunbridge. And um, all of them have uh, nominations and elections, I believe, 
um, from from the town, from the individual town. So they, that's they, Gr Granville does. Yeah. Um, I have to do separate ballots for Granville. My recollection is Chelsea Tunbridge, which would be first branch, does nominations, and and then I think does uh, and Let does it by no. at large. But it is possible to do it. Okay. Elected at large. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yep, nominated locally. All right. Um, yeah, okay. Do you have further questions on that, Carl? I don't know if that helps, Carl. Um, um, it it, it, it does. I have further questions more on 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 the, uh, the, the bond side of things and whether or not um, the fact we'll that... Get Carl we'll down to get gets right of first refusal, but I will uh, put those together in, into an email and send and send that on because that's really not germane to this discussion. Well, it's 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 going to be because there is some talk about bond votes and this very issue about you know individual bonds is one of the items that comes up later in our um, hot topics list. Um, so you know having more information on that is 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 very appropriate. Um, so, that, so that's not something that I've prepared a, no, a, a formal opinion on, but if you want me to, I, I can a, do so. Yeah, it's not an action item for tonight, but it is definitely something we want to talk about tonight and, and bring to you later. Uh, somebody else raised a hand. Was it Megan or was it Amy? It's, it's me. I'm sorry. Megan. Megan, it's thank me. you. Yep. Uh, I just want to just thank Carl for bringing it up because being on the study committee, I felt what well, what we just heard is very different than we, what we heard during the study committee. And I'm glad to hear that there is wiggle room to uh, adjust these in a more fair and balanced way. So thank you. What, one of the things we've discovered a little bit, and Dina will point this out when we actually look at the amendment, is there is language in the articles of agreement that's sort of like, hey, wait, what's that? And you realize it's about the setup of the district. And that the, in the articles, there's this often a distinction between how things are set up initially and then how things can go forward. And that that's part of this issue now of what we heard. Maybe that's what you heard before. I don't know. But did you say, Adina, that was 706K was uh, what was the it was something in the law that was the one that said going forward? Uh, you're muted, Dina. Sorry, I'm more comfortable on um, Zoom, and I also have a dog who's like, seriously, another night meeting. Yes. Um, so hold on, and he's right here. It was 706K, 706K. Under, Title 6, under Title 16, which talks about, and I can bring it back up. Hold on and let me mute myself though. Mm -hmm. I have a yoga teacher who's the dog walks in, in the middle of the class pretty much regularly. It's just something you get used to. Okay, do we have further questions, general questions, before we get to the specifics of this particular? I just have, I just have one. I just have one question that came up last time, um, I guess, mostly directed at Dina. I did get a response from Jamie Canarney after the last meeting, but I just wanted to confirm that um, that we can make an amendment to the agreement without, um, I guess, confirming that we wouldn't need state approval since this is a, a document that was blessed by the state. So in, in, in terms of the provision that you're talking about making an amendment to, which is Article 7 of your Articles of Agreement, you do not need to have approval from the State Board of Education. There is an exception to not having to get State Board approval. So in, order, in other words, you have to get State Board of approval if you're going to be modifying um, so if you decide that you're you're going to be modifying how you deliver and, and support and maintain education for, for kids. So if you're going to say we're not going to do, uh, you know, kindergarten through, you know, sixth grade in our own school, you would have to be getting state approval yeah. for that. But not on this issue. Um, 
Uh, sorry, Justine, I just want to clear that up. Uh, Jenny, are you taking notes as, as usual? Yes, I'm taking notes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Justine, for the question. Um, though we did talk a long time ago about getting people to do that for you so you could be engaged, but we'll get to that another night. Um, good. Further questions uh, for Dina on this item. So I think we've established, or Dina has established, that we have the right to do this um, or that we can do this. Um, the next would be how we do this and what are the specifics. Um, oh, and we've lost Dina. So um, I think this is a good time. Lindy, why don't you put up the... Oh, wait, sorry. I, I, have, I have one more. Oh, now yeah. that we've yep. talked about the... The the, the 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 generals i i did have a, i was want to have a follow-up specific question about i want to make sure that i understand you know what you were saying <clears throat> it, it, we amend the articles agreement to do this um we get we get uh a, a, a you know vaccine and herd immunity and we're back uh meeting meeting in a uh in in a in a, in a, in a regular format um you know town hall style style meeting what this is binding us to do is to have each of our town clerks at different sides of whichever facility we're meeting in and the Rochester people line up on the Rochester side and the Stockbridge people line up on the Stockbridge side, correct? Or we would have to, or we, we would have to re, re, re amend the articles agreement to say that we're restoring it. So I, yeah, it, it would be something along the lines of, you know, checking people when they came in or, or, or doing something if you maintained doing everything by a floor vote. One of the things that I pointed out to the committee was that if, that I, I think that if you're going to do this, you also have to put forward bare minimum, are you going to do the election of school board directors by Australian ballot? And that would be, as I remember Dean, you saying, that has to be a separate part of it. Yes, so the-, the second Separate amendment. So, so it's a it's a it's a separate article for the same vote. So so in, in other words, Carl, this year under Act 162, last year I think it was Act 94, 92. Right. Right? You're, we get to have a, a one a, a one year Australian year without having to 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 warn to it warn it into a fan and it will change change the way we ballot. We'd have to you can't you 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 have pre-COVID, right, Dina, we had to either be Australian or be floor vote. You couldn't, you couldn't, you, you had to change your bylaws or change your, your charter or whatever it is formally. You couldn't just do that on a whim. You actually have to take it to the vote of the electorate. And, and it says that within your articles of agreement in order to put Australian balloting in place. Um, so if it was a non-COVID year this year, and you were doing a floor meeting and you put it in place at your annual meeting, you, you put the vote for your annual meeting, it would be starting in 2022. Okay, so if we had a, so we would either need to, can we, can we have an amendment as part of this process that does not have to go before the voters to move uh, the election of officers to being, you know, the, the the sole Australian ballot item, or is that we have that we have to take to the electorate? Correct. We say Absolutely. here's 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 an article at the annual meeting that says, will will the towns of stock will the voters of our of, of our sud uh, uh, approve voting by Australian ballot for officers of the board? So yeah, yeah. So there there are three things primarily which can be voted on by Australian ballot, right? So it's public questions, elections, um, and budgets, right? I think um, White River Unified School District votes on their budget perhaps by Australian ballot, or they vote on their directors by Australian ballot and their budget is at a floor. I'm not, I apologize. I looked at your stuff, not theirs. So, um, I had provided, and, and that was part of what I wanted to, to bring up to the board, which is I had provided that article, uh, a proposed article two, and the language is very specific under title 17 that you need to use, um, <clears throat> excuse me, about having an article that would be voted on 
this year that would be in essence having you do Australian ballot starting in 2022. You have to take Australian ballot both under your articles of agreement and, and under Title 17 at, to a vote of the electorate. Okay. I didn't um, know that. Sorry. Why did, what are those two different things? What's this Article 17? So, no, I'm sorry, to, t to do Australian balloting under, you have to under Title 17, which is the election laws. Oh, okay. Thank you, you have to take that to, that has to be a vote of the electorate. Okay. It, so also, it also happens to say it in your articles of agreement that any, you know, any, if you were going to change from a floor meeting process, it, it references the provision of, of Title 17 about having to go to the electorate for that. So to be clear, um, we probably need to talk about two separate amendments here. We have the first amendment is whether we're going to separate out the a nomination and election of, of school directors per town. And then the second would be from now on or from 2022, we will be doing Australian ballot for election of school board members. This is correct. Right. So, yeah, so I, I, so I wanna be um, clear and it, it, it's a uh, sort of a, what my job is that words are, are very distinct to me what they mean. Mm -hmm. So an, amend, an amendment is, when I use the term amendment, I'm talking about your articles of agreement. Yes. So you would have to be amending, well, you don't have to, you, but you're, you asked me about amending article seven so that school board directors were both nominated and voted on by their town of residence, by the qualified voters in their town of residence. That's an amendment to me. Title 17, which talks about invoking and, and taking to the electorate the decision of whether or not things will be done by Australian balloting, yes. is, is not an amendment to me. That's, that's a, it's a provision under the law. So I wanna be very clear right. I get so that, that I don't confuse people. So what, what do we call it then, that second thing? Is it a motion? Is it a article is it a it's an article for for it's an article for the electorate the qualified voters or okay. for the electorate to vote on uh, great so to be clear we have an amendment and an article that we need mm -hmm. to discuss tonight and approve or disapprove or disapprove of both and i think within that there needs to be just some discussion about you know do we do this australian ballot thing now or do we you know put it off to later the idea is you'll see from the warning when we get to it um, is that we're talking about doing this on town meeting day and not waiting for this to happen um, to the school board meeting. That's what the warning says now. Um, uh, so that's a discussion we can have as well. Are there any further questions, uh, general questions about this before we look at the specific amendment first and then we'll look at the um, article second? Any further questions? Not articles, sorry, what's the word? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're, they're both technically in a warning oh. in articles. One is the amendment, the article for an amendment, the other one is the article for a vote. Yeah. That's okay. how I would phrase it. Article for amendment. And I want to be very clear, Ethan, that yeah. if you put these two articles out, they're standalone articles. Yep. And so you may wind up with Australian balloting for your school board directors and not and not wind up with the residence issue or you may wind up with the residence issue and not Australian balloting. Yep. Gotcha. And, and and as we discussed in the committee, I think that the residence issue without the Australian balloting is going to make for a very long town meeting or annual school district meeting. Well, they're usually, ours were used to be very, very, very fast anyway, because everything was Australian ballot. So not much happened. Good. Um, Carl, you have your head, hand up. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I'm sorry. I thought that the uh, first part of that, the changing of the uh, articles of agreement to reflect residency, I thought you said that, th you just said that didn't have to go before the state. It does have to go before the voters. Yes. Okay. So that was, I, I'm sorry, I, I, as, I, as, I, as I stated my question, I, I answered it for myself. Good. You did. 
You did one one of the things that came up, Carl, is that you all did, and I think it's caused some of the confusion that has built up to this crescendo uh, of where people don't necessarily understand the specificity of of how bad lawyers truly are. But your warning, particularly, and, and there are other uh, union school districts that I dealt with in your original warning for the creation of your unified school district, your union school district, purposefully only put in some articles which have to go to the electorate and purposefully left some which are board decisions. Article seven has to go to the electorate. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to be clear on that. Um, and that's why your warning doesn't list out all 16 articles. And it in fact had had an article that said regarding the report and formation plan. Oh, wow, this is a big one we've been talking about for weeks. Holy smoke. And, 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 and that's, that's what that provision in your warning for the establishment of your union school district, the legal purpose of that because you only have two articles that actually have to be part of your warning to, to create a union school district. And that's election of directors. And it's the necessary districts that need, towns and districts that need to be in there. Wow. So that's also under Title 16 under the 700 section, which deals with union school districts. So let me be clear, because what you just said has a lot of influence on some of the things we talk about later and about the Articles of Agreement Committee anyway, and this is slightly out of order, but I wanna do it now. Are you saying that the articles that are in the warning in the report, the ones that are not in the warning are ones that are at the discretion of the board? More, mostly, can you identify those? I, I would have to go through it, and I was trying to find your, your, your warning for it, and I know that my, my office prepared the warning. But yes, what I'm saying is with some exceptions, right? Okay. Um, that when you got to, I believe it was the article 11 on your warning, perhaps, mm -hmm. that has that, you know, we will be, the school, the, the school board will be governed by the report and formation plan. Yes. Which was approved by the State Board of Education. What was left not in your warning, with the exception of any provision, okay. Voted warning, you mean? Your voted warning for the establishment of your union school district, with the exception of anything that has a separate and distinct statutorily um, created reason to have to go to the electorate, was leaving it to the board being able to make the decision. Wow, that does answer and, a big question. Okay. And, and so I also probably, and, and it didn't hit me, Ethan, until I think one of your last emails last week when I said, wait a minute. Um, what that also causes, and I want to be very clear, is that if you take something which a board has the authority to make the decision on and you even, and you decide out of uh, that you want to do things transparently, that you want to get some input from your constituents and the electorate, and you put that to a vote of the electorate, I want you to understand that that vote of the electorate is only an advisory. It's not a binding. Okay. Because if the board has the authority, the board has the authority. If the electorate has the authority, the electorate has the authority. This is very so That's why your warning looked different and I think that confused people. And I, oh, yeah. I think, you know, and, and I, you know, when I saw what the warning was, when you sent your email, it made sense about some of the discussion we were having in the committee where people said, hey, wait a minute, you know, somebody switched stuff and did a switcheroo. There was no switcheroo. And I want to be very clear about that. What was sent to the State Board of Ed is your formation and report that creates your school district and you had an appropriate and legal warning that created your union school district, but there was that article 11 in the voted upon warning that established that some things were the prerogative of the board and not of the electorate. So the 
problem of that, well, no, I guess it is Article 7 in both. That's what I was checking. Right, so Article 7, because that's one of the mandatory articles, one of two that needs to be in. It's the same in both. Okay, good. It that's needs to be in the warning. That's why I'm telling you that's a vote of the electorate. You all can't, as a board, don't have the authority to make that decision. Because that's great. That's That would have been very confusing if that was a different number. All right. Good. Thank you. Well, that's that's a good one. Thank you for remembering that one, Dina. All mm -hmm. right. Are there further general questions about uh, the law on this article, on this amendment, before we go to the specific amendment? Megan? Nope, I'm good. Thank you. Danny? No, I'm good. Thank you. Good. Justine? No, thank you. Amy? Amy, are you there? You're muted. Yep. You, you can hear me if you hit Control D, that'll unmute you. Try that. Control D. Are you on a Mac or are you on a. Yeah. Control D. Command D. Right then you might have to go out and come right back in again to get it to reset. Sometimes that's the quickest way to do it. Okay. Or what? she's okay. She's all right. Okay. Um, I mean, if, whoa, what did I just do? Sorry, I just got out. No, am I here? Yes. Okay. <sighs> Touch screens, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Amy. Great, Carl, I assume you're good. Something. I actually do have one question. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I want to make um, sure we're thoroughly through this. And I can come on now. I just wanted to uh, ask, so that means all of the articles that were warned to the Board of Education that we um, were confused about are at the discretion of the board. So most of our, a, a lot of our hot topics are basically at the discretion of the board. Well, we don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I need a real. I need Dina to go through both articles. And say this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This okay. Is, so I'm I think we still need that that distinction, so we'll really know. I get I, it. I think it's a. In some ways, it's an education about each article. Um, I get it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be a really good committee work for us to do. You know, at our next meeting, is to sit down and get an education on the distinctions between the two uh, sets of articles. Right. And, and the reason why they were done that way, Justine, is that, quite honestly, the way it's looked at from a bo overarching rationale is that you want to permit a board to have the flexibility to address certain things. Um, and, and that's why it was done, because it is uh, it, it's not a small thing to take a vote of the election to do a vote of the electorate on things, right? And that's why we do it for important things like directors, right? It's, it's the checks and balances. Right. Absolutely, the checks and balances that make things challenging so that it's not easy to change the articles or all of them. Um, right. I think that's good. Great, does that answer your question, Justine? Yeah, I, I understand the answer to my question. I think I was just kind of getting ahead of things by asking. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, pretty I, exciting news actually, considering what we've been right. doing. So we can just keep going as we are, and I get it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, Dina, I think we're ready to put up the amendment, okay. and let's let's talk this through. Um, and as I say, this is we have time tonight. I want to make sure everybody asks all the questions they have, so that everybody understands where we are. Oh my God, that's so small, I can barely see it. Okay, let me try it. Um, well, that's, that made it even worse, didn't it? Let, yeah. um, you do your slider at the bottom? Yeah, there you go. Does that work? Uh, I think so, yeah. It is okay. bigger if you're on a computer screen. It might be different on a touch screen, Ethan. That might yeah. be right. Uh, it computer. is definitely smaller. Yeah, you, if you all can see it, okay, that's all that matters. So, um, my, so my understanding was that you were not, you were going to be doing um, a vote that corresponded with town meeting day but was not 
moving your annual school board meeting. No. And that's and no. that's a thumbs up from Carl as well. I think I just saw. Did you that's, give a thumbs up that that's, or do you have a question? This, is, this, is, this was the intent, and this is certainly something we can talk about. The intent is that we, um, is that this piggybacks on town meeting day and gets done on town meeting day so that then it is available for the school board vote in May. That is okay. the intent. Good. So, yep. so that's the assumption I worked on. Um, and so it is noticed, it's warned as a special meeting because it's not your annual meeting. Um, the first paragraph is talking about it being on March 2nd, 2021. The fact that you are using Australian balloting to do this is because of the COVID issue. And, and Act 162. And Amy has a question. Yep, go for it, Amy. Um, and Bonnie, maybe she can confirm this, but um, I assume that the voting will take place um, at the Rochester School campus and not at the town offices due to, due to COVID. Yes, they've asked us that, Amy, and we've already given them the heads up on that. Okay. Okay, that, that was one of the things that I had as a question and that can be changed. I also need to know what time the polls are actually open and for for both. Um, and then it, it so hmm. you also have shall the legal. So here is the amendment to the articles is art. The 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 question whether or not the articles of agreement will be amended is article one in this warning. And it, it is the language I gave you in your draft. Um, Tried to, did you hear what? Yeah, your no. draft, a draft warning. Um, and what I did so that there's clarity for the voters is it's a cross out of what you're crossing out and it's a bold and an underline of what the new language is. It's pretty standard. Um, and the change is, is that the, th the three directors will be nominated by the legal voters of, for example, Rochester. And also the additional language is such representatives shall be voted on solely by the legal residents of Rochester and removing at large. And I did that as well for Stockbridge so that I, I'm not picking one town over the other, but this is how your article listed Rochester first and then Stockbridge. So I just want to make sure you all understand that. And the language within Article 7 of your Articles of Agreement is all directors shall have equal votes on the board. We had a slight conversation about that. That's staying. That has to stay. Mm -hmm. Article 2 of the warning is shall the legal voters of the Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District elect its Board of School Directors by Australian ballot. I also did, because I was not totally clear whether or not you want Article 3, which is about budgeting doing it, or public questions. I can remove those if we're not, if you're not looking to do your annual budget or all public questions by Australian ballot. All right. Well, let's, um, so we need some information. We need the, the exact wording. If we're going to get at work on this tonight, we need the exact wording of how voting is going to happen. Um, and I'm wondering if someone has that from May. From I'm, more than, I, I'm more than likely, you did it at your schools. I, I did your warning. You did November, that'd be, the, that'd be the most recent time. Yeah, it was the last school vote, budget vote. Okay. So I can make those changes and that's fine. You're telling me what those changes are. And so there's not a problem with, in terms of Okay, if we can still warn this, if it doesn't have the exact language in it, is that possible? Or we can still vote on this? And sure, yes. Okay. Because I, I know so before we, we had to be- We vote on this uh, as to be amended and we and, and then we, we would sign a copy that has the proper language. Got you, got you. Okay, well, good. Let's, let's, um, and all questions are fair here. Um, you know, I really want people to have a, 
a talk about this. Um, given that at the at the uh, meetings, uh, the, the the study committee committee meetings back in the day, you know, this was what I was in favor of. Um, if it's legal, I, I I certainly think, you know, this is fine, and I'm really glad that, you know, this is something that we're 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 putting to uh, uh, the voters. The piece that I don't, you know, I I certainly like the idea of of, of telling them, uh, giving them the option to vote uh, for for uh, directors by Australian ballot, um, because and you know and then make sure that our material and our because we'll have to have an informational meeting. Our, our informational meeting will explain how in a traditional town meeting this would mean having to to, to vote separately by town if you didn't adopt Article Two. I am not in favor of uh, the subsequent articles for public question or for voting. Um, we were fairly clear um, in my mind in, in, in all the discussions when we formed this that town meeting was important to both our towns and um, going to, you know, kind of going to Australian ballot to make voting for electors or, or to make voting for uh, board members more convenient seems to me to be a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a backdoor slide. I'm certainly willing to have have that discussion, it's, um, I mean, as Dina said, there. I mean, you know, there, there, there's plenty of there's ways people get a colored card when they walk through the door. Um, and yeah, no, I, 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 absolutely, and, and I am I, I am certainly fine with leaving it a town meeting too, with putting that question yeah. on there and asking our voters. Here's what it's going to be. You're going to have to kind of. We're not going to make you sit in Stockbridge and Rochester sections like bride and groom at a wedding. I wouldn't think. But yeah, colored cards for standing up and holding them, yep. um, you know, things like that. But making sure our voters understand and that they could go to Australian ballot. I'm, I, like I said, I'm against Articles Three and Article Four because yep. I think talking about changing the way we, we vote for our representation is not the appropriate uh, venue or conversation to talk about how we vote for our budget or how we vote on public questions. I think the, the point has been made. I remember it being made that this is a longstanding tradition with Stockbridge to have uh, things decided in the school board, uh, in the meeting, the school meeting, whereas Rochester, and I've never enjoyed it particularly, um, decided a while ago to go to Australian ballot. So I, I would have to say I, I agree with Carl. Um, I'm, I'm fine with the ballots. It makes things easier, but if they vote it down, no problem. Um, but I'm three and four would go. Uh, Amy, let's go around the board and just get on that. How do you feel about this? Uh, specifically articles three and four? Let's take care of them first. Let's get them okay. out of the way. Um, yeah, I, Rochester, you know, pre prior to our merger had always done Australian ballot. So that's, that is just how our town has done it. Um, but I, I have had no problem moving to a floor vote. Um, and I think that if that's, you know, something that's very, you know, it's a, it's a something Stockbridge is really adamant about. Uh, it's, I think that's fine to, to keep it as a floor, floor vote. Um, so uh, for both those articles. So I would, I'd be fine with removing those as well. Okay, Carl, before I get to you, I just want to get around to everybody else here. Uh, Justine, we're talking about three and four and whether we think they're there. We want them or we want to get rid of them. Um, I, I think that, um, the floor, I think from what I have talked to Stockbridge members about, um, the floor vote probably is, is in line with what the Stockbridge citizens would want. I know that uh, a lot of people are attached to that, uh, format. Uh, I'm not personally attached to that format specifically, but I would, I would lean in that direction. To, of getting rid of three and four. Yes. Okay. Megan? Um, I am fine with getting rid of articles three and four and sticking with doing um, floor vote for our budget and public questions. And I think Australian ballot for our candidates at our regular town meetings, I think that works fine. So I'm for removing articles three and four. Good. Jenny? Um, I'm actually neutral. I'm not sure... Um, which I favor, so I could go either way. Um, I think that it doesn't hurt to put the vote out there um, to see what the communities want, so I guess I could go either way. Hmm. Interesting point. That we sort of leave it out there and see what, how people are feeling these, these days. 
Uh, let me get back to or, Carl. Hold on a sec. Let me get back to Carl because he had his hand raised before. Uh, Carl. Yeah, <clears throat> I, 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 I wanted to make it clear that, you know, um, and maybe it's just the lens that I'm coming into this conversation uh, uh, tonight about, which was about, you know, amending the articles of, a, of agreement to change the way we elected, we, we, we elected representation. And then, so, I mean, certainly I think that if, if people are interested in, in, in those questions, I'm not, I am, I, I am more attached to, um, to a floor votes for the budget because at least in Stockbridge, there have been uh, times where um, you know commentary has has occasionally added money, or we've 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 made adjustments to the budget based on what on, on, on what families have said on the floor. We we you know obviously the amendments can't be you know we're you know we're we're amending this specific line, but we've discussed items and we've either added or or, or decreased on the floor to compensate for changes that the board would then. You know, um, uh, amend the budget for, or uh, instruct the the, the, the principals and administration to uh, uh, change things for. So, I guess out of three and four, I would be most um, interested in, in 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 taking off three, the budget piece, because I've seen value in that. I have not in my ex in my fifteen years of being on the board really seen um, a lot of public questions being modified um, uh, on on the floor. So. We, we can leave that on. But like I said, my, my biggest objection was more that I was looking at this conversation about how we elected our electors and then so kind of didn't think that it was appropriate to be asking budget and public question issues. But if we want to just reopen the whole Australian ballot question, we can do that as well, I suppose. Amy and then Megan. Um, sort of uh, a little bit to what uh, Carl's saying. Um, Maybe this is something we remove from uh, this warning because this warning is to focus it just on the electoring, the electing of uh, school board representation. And maybe we have the committee revisit this um, at another time. Or for our, our, our school meeting in May. Maybe this is a better, um, yeah. better time, time to do it and get them, you know, after we, but I think you, your idea of focus, I think, makes a lot of sense to me. Let's focus on this really important amendment here. Uh, Megan, I think you, was it, yeah, you had your hand up? Yes, um, I also, I'm just, I really, I think we should allow the voters at our, our annual meeting to just to, to have say in these two articles, but I am partial to keeping the budget um, on the floor because I do like having our two towns come together and have a discussion once a year the best we can to, you know, have each town, our people being heard. So that's just all I really wanted to say. I, I would add to that, that being a, a merged uh, district, uh, it's, it's possibly sometimes the one time when we really get the two towns sort of together. Exactly. Uh, really discuss. And so that gives it for me a much, much stronger need to put in there. Um, uh, I, I think I'll, uh, should we, how do we do this, Dina? Can I make a motion that we uh, strike these two from current, um, from the current article or could the current warning um, to add them or just, I guess right now we would strike them and then put them in later. Can um, I ask a quick question? Oh yeah, sure, Jenny, absolutely. And do you know how um, to raise your hand? By the way, just um, to... I think I do. Sorry, I did not. Yeah, no, that's fine. It's just I, I can't. Otherwise, I can't know sometimes that I'm missing somebody. Please go. Yeah, ahead. I was just I was just wondering if articles three and four, if that was something that the committee had come up with, or if that was something that that Dina had no, um, Dina. put in to be kind of all encompassing. Yeah, this was Dina. Um, this was definitely we, we didn't we didn't talk about this. She put it in there as an option. Um, so. Um, uh, and actually, I mean, well, obviously, Article Two is from Dina too because she knows that it's needed. It's needed to make this uh, to make this work. Um, uh, Dina, is that correct? Should I make a motion that we strike these two from the warning, or just take them out? If we, I'm just going to take them out because it was my proposal because I didn't know what you all were looking for. And I just I want to make. I just want. We don't. Sure. I don't believe we have a, a formal motion on the floor, Ethan, so we don't have to amend anything. I think right. she, takes, no. she takes them out and then we move to accept uh, the, the, the well, new. Can we do a thumbs up 
thumbs up that we're fine with removing these for now. I see it, Carl. I see Amy. Um, Justine, you can also say it verbally. Um, Justine, are you okay with moving these two right yeah, now? I, I thought my thumb was right there, but Sorry, yeah. I, I can't see everybody. Um, oh, okay. Thumbs up. I don't, I don't know how this works where I can see. I love Zoom. I don't like Google Meets. No. Oh. Um, yeah. Megan. I am. I'm good. Thank you. Good. Jenny. Jenny just gave a thumbs up. Okay, good. Yeah, Thank you. Time. I don't know how I get to see all of you. All I get to see, it's not like I can do gallery in here. All right. Good. They're out of there. Great. So let's get back to um, the amendment. Um, questions on this. And I think the wording is the same. Uh, go to the three dots at the right. Choose change layout. Who was that? Was that Carl? <laughs> yeah, that's so you can try to get... Uh, uh, and, and you can see more people. What do I look to? Add others? No, you're, no you're changing. go to the three dots in the lower right-hand corner. Yeah, I'm there. Click on those. Click change layout. And then you can go to tiled. And you can actually even select it so it's more than 16 people. I don't have change layout. Are you on a uh, touch screen? Yes. Are you using Google Chrome? Uh, yes. Anyway. All right. Okay. At another time, Ethan, we can we can do it. Yeah, no. You I, can show me I, your I, screen, and I can show you mine, and we can figure it out type of deal. I really would like to be able to see other meetings. Oh, wait. That's right. I think. No. Nope. Still doesn't do it. Doesn't give me enough. Oh, well, tough luck. I'll just have to ask you to be verbal. Um, okay. Do we have uh, further questions on this uh, warned this warning that we had to have in front of us? So um, uh, I can go on. Good. Okay. So I guess my initial, initially my, my reaction was that um, I was concerned because the students in our district, um, need to be represented equally by all members of the board, regardless what town you come from. And um, so it, I felt that it was really important that residents from both towns evaluated who was going to uh, uh, be responsible for, for the management of, of educating our kids. Uh, I felt that it was something that um, everybody needed to really evaluate who was gonna be the candidates. Well, I've thought, you know, uh, quite a bit more about it, and I do understand, um, you know, there is uh, some feeling of minority um, and inequity, um, and, you know, it does seem that this is um, what a number of other towns and districts are already doing. Um, so that made me feel a little bit better about it, that we're not just, um, uh, do, you know, creating something new. Um, so, you know, I do hope that everybody does understand that no matter what town of residence you are from, you are representing all of our kids. You are representing the kids in both towns and the education and uh, the, the um, management of this. Uh, so, um, yeah, I guess that's, that's it. Thank you, Amy. I think that's a very good point. Uh, Further comments or questions? Justine? I, I think, Amy, that was a really good point to bring up. Thank you. But no other comments or questions. OK. Megan? Nope, I agree, Amy. Excellent point. Thank you. Jenny? Nope, I agree. Thank you. Carl? Amy, thank you very much for your words. I think your uh, uh, your, your concerns are spot on, and you know, I I really, you know, I, I really hope that you know that that trying to, to 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 you know that as as we all try to accommodate each other, we can all move uh, 
tour. I, I, I see. I want to say a more perfect union, but then I, I feel like I'm, I'm super cheesy. But now I just said it, so there you go. But no, I think trying to be accommodating, and and uh, as you know, I think we all should try to be accommodating of each other. And so, I, I think that's you know, it, it's good to voice that opinion, and it's good to take this action both. Okay, are we are we ready to move this warning? and to vote upon it. I move we uh, uh, accept this warning as presented. Okay, do we have a second? Second, ma'am. Justine, I think that's, Justine, get the second on there. You've done a lot of work on this. Um, uh, further discussion? I'm gonna just call the roll on that just to make sure. Uh, Carl? Aye. Oh, no, I'm not <laughs> voting yet. Uh, this is just discussion. I just want to make sure that anybody has... Oh, no, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I am done with discussion. Okay. Good. <laughs> Amy, any discussion? No, I'm good. Thank you. Justine, any further discussion? No, thank you. Jenny, any further discussion? No, I'm good. Good. Megan, further discussion? No, thank you. Okay. This time I'm going to call the roll on this. Carl? Aye. Aye. Amy? Megan. Aye. Aye. Uh, Justine. Aye. Jenny. Aye. Ethan. Aye. Excellent. Thank you all very much. Um, I, 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 well, the other thing is, you know, this is a good thing. We've talked about it a lot, and I think it's a good thing. All right. Um, let us move on then. Uh, okay, so what, what can I interrupt? So, yeah. Um, so one is uh, Jenny is still, I believe, your clerk. So I'm going to make the changes to to the places of where you're going to be doing the vote. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you all are. I'll I'll email Jenny and Jamie Canarni as well, and people have to go in and, and vote it. And Jenny, you've dealt with these before, but if you have questions, you'll let me know. Sounds okay. good. Thank you. Hey, Dina, one yeah. one one question that has been a little confusing to uh, the Stockbridge people is they keep saying, "Well, we want your warning for our booklet for our information," but they don't, right? This is a separate ballot that will be at the place, but it will not be um, it will not be part of the town report. Is that correct? It, it doesn't need to be part of the town report because it is not your annual meeting of the school board. Um, and I understand why they want it. If you can get it in there with an explanation from from the board as to you know what this vote is and what it means um, and why it's being you you should be able to. I, I'm assuming they'll let you put that in there. Um, you know, you all can just do it. This is what this is to amend the articles of agreement. I just got an email from Jim Shan saying we have till the 19th to get that information. So I say public, any publicity is good publicity personally. Um, so uh, I think we will do that once the warning is finalized and signed, we will get it to them by the 19th with a little explanation of why we think this is useful. Wait, Carl, yep. Go ahead. That's what I was going to say. That's, you know, it's the, the, the town of Stockbridge looks at that booklet as, as basically all the towns, you know, all, all the town's business. Um, and that's what they're going to be looking at when they think about their vote on the second. So I think having, you know, much like there's a statement from EC Fiber that I used to have to prepare, um, the, you know, a statement of here's what this, this ballot is. It's a separate ballot. Um, and here's why we're doing it. You know, it, nothing more than a paragraph. We don't need chapter and verse and history of blah, blah, blah. Just no. here's what it is. Here's the article. You know, there you go. Okay. Um, right. and my expectation, Ethan and, and Jenny, is that, uh, what's it, Tuesday? I should be able to get you both the warning and the ballot by Thursday, Friday. And so you should be able to send it out to them. Good. Yeah. Once the I'm assuming you all will be able to go and sign it wherever you need to go sign it. So yeah, uh, the nineteenth is next Tuesday. So if we got it to them by Monday, or that would be. That it would be thrilled. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, if we want to get to this, remember the the let's 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 pause for a moment and talk about the logistics of that. Um, we would really need to because the 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 the, the Stockbridge Town Clerk doesn't you know will close um, Friday at noon and won't reopen till till Tuesday morning. Ah. Um, so Dana, it would can you probably, it would probably really behoove us to have that um, on Thursday, Dina, if we could. Yeah. Thank um, you for reminding me of that, Carl. You're right, because Monday's a, um, you know, a holiday. Then, if you can get it to if you can get it to to, to Jenny or or, or Lindy, because I know we like to have Jenny getting those things and 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 putting her her mark on them first before it gets passed around to everybody. Um, we can we do can. that, and then you know, if you got it to us, if we had it. You know, beginning of the day Thursday, we could easily get it. You know, yeah. get it to them on time. So if if we can do that rather than Friday, that'd be awesome. Absolutely. Thank you for for laying that out for me. So it's going to be Lindy and Jenny. Uh, it's going to be two documents. It's going to be the warning and also um, the you can well the warning you can put out the ballot and we might as well put the ballot out as well so people can see what a sample ballot looks like. And Dina, we, are, are you going to check with the Rochester town clerk to verify uh, their voting um, day and time for that they're doing? Because I, I think they're doing it actually March first. You know, I just, Amy, I just read the I just read the email. It's ten to seven. Are they on doing Monday, it on town meeting day? Whoa, whoa, whoa! One at a time, please. Is there a vote on town meeting? It's March uh, March first. So this is one of the issues is that our town meetings are at different times. Um, okay. Dr. Bridges is during the day and ours is at night. Um, so I don't know if that matters in terms of gathering the, the votes or, or for this, but that is the reality. Okay, so I need to. Think, I think that you're saying one is the, the day before March first, and one is on March second. It's a, it's the Tuesday night, correct? Rochester is always the Tuesday night. Amy, I just received an email um, yeah. that okay. states that Rochester Charity. is voting on Australia is. March first, March first from ten to seven. Right, Monday, March first. Where are they voting? Seven. Where are they voting? Did They're going to be voting at the high school. Okay. okay. So then, then the, the 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 first paragraph would read, you know, the residents of Rochester voting March first, ten to seven, blah blah blah, high school, blurgity blurg way, and the voters of Stockbridge voting at Stockbridge town offices March second, seven to seven, I think, or whatever that happens to be, you know, address what is whatever it is, Route One One Hundred, so on and so forth. Right. We, we can have two. We can have the warning have the specific locations and times for both places, right? We don't have to have separate ones, do we, Dina? No, no the warning would deal with both. Um, just so I'm also clear, um, Carl, is that, and, and for the remainder of the board, the vote is not gonna be commingled. While it will be a majority rules, the vote itself will be reported out by, um, by town. Uh, Charity, uh, uh, I, you've often had important points of order for us uh, on procedure, if you'd like to drop in. Yeah, I was just trying to save you guys some time because you hit three major points and kind of took the roundabout to get there that we had already kind of discussed. The difference in meeting time, Rochester is the night before Stockbridge. That's it. And that it will not be commingled. It will be tallied, total tallied. And I can't remember what the other one is, but you guys got there. Ah, thank you. Thank yeah, you. so I'll, I'll call on you sooner because you, you often have that clarity for us. Thank you. I appreciate it. Right. So, you know, it still is the a majority of both towns combined passes or doesn't pass. I just want to. So, so the result, can the result not come out until both have voted? So I, yeah, so that's a, so you will know tomorrow before lunchtime hopefully whether or not that's going to raise any issues because i was not aware that they had two different dates so let me talk to will Senning at the um 
at the Secretary of State's office to make sure that if this is a problem that's going to happen for a lot of union school districts based upon what the legislature is going to come out with. Um, and, uh, you know, where some towns may vote this day, some towns may vote that day. Um, and the legislature hasn't come out with the dealing with that issue. Um, yes, I do need Lindy uh, confirmation from the town of Stockbridge clerk as well, what the polling hours are. Uh, All right, I just, I'll send something to Lori right now just to confirm, because normally it's from the floor. And they're both very good. I mean, my expectation is, and my hope is quite, quite frankly, for your town clerks and for the polling officials is that the majority of your um, constituents and electorate would actually do absentee voting or mail-in voting, request an absentee ballot for all of their voting. True. Um, you know, I think we're, we're still in the same place we were in May. So, of course. Um, of course. so the, the time of the meeting actually is irrelevant, except that there'll be informational meetings because everything will be Australian ballot for this year. Yeah, your informational meetings. I mean, we can talk about that if you're if we're going to be going for it. Your informational meeting, if you're going to be doing things by Australian ballot, doing this by Australian ballot for your annual meeting, I would strongly um, suggest that you all do a remote informational meeting, obviously. Well, no, of course. I'm just saying, if everything is Australian ballot, do you still do Australian ballot on the day the meeting would have been? Or do you do it on town meeting day? Because we can choose. Because this isn't our town report. We could pick, we, we, I think we can set the date we want this Australian ballot to happen, right? Can't we? Yes, you can. Right, but you can. Hold on a second, Amy. Just let Dean and then we'll get to you. Yeah. You, you can, but my understanding was is that you thought that it was beneficial to have it run at the same time when people were going for their town meetings. Well, um, meeting Australian ballots, putting in the ballots for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Amy, and then and then Charity. Yes. Right. I, I understand. Uh, I think that this conversation, there will be some people who are still going to vote in person, and there'll be people who vote by mail in. But there is going to be people who are going to vote by Australian ballot in person, and the idea is that we have it at that same time and not a separate day that they have to come back two days to vote. Gotcha. For this. Okay. Um, and you want to get this in on time so that it can be mailed out with whatever the town is mailing out for absentee ballots at the same time. Because we ran into that um, with the November election. We didn't have stuff in time, so they, it had to be a separate mailing. Okay, good. Um, and Charity, do you have clarification on this? Yeah, I just want to reiterate what Amy said, because that's exactly what we came up with during the committee meeting when we discussed this, was that it would be most beneficial to keep it at the same time gotcha. as the town meeting so that you do hit the most of the electorate possible, because that's what they're familiar with. And we're giving them a minimal amount of notice on this. So don't change more than we absolutely have to on those timings. Good. Thank you, Charity. Um, all right. Okay, so I, I will talk to the Secretary of State's office, um, the Elections Division, about the difference in the dates and, and how that impacts. And I will let you know as soon as possible. Uh, the latest you'll get this, if we're all good to go, will be up by Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, if there are any concerns, obviously, from them, I will let you know the moment they tell me. Right. I mean, I, I would assume that, couldn't they just, like, count and then seal the result. Yeah, I gotta I gotta talk to them, Carl, and see yeah. what's permissible yeah. because it's it's since you're not co-mingling, they are counting. Um they count at the town itself. It's whether or not they can delay the report out until the next day, perhaps, or the day after. Mm. So I need I need to have that conversation with Will Senning or, or with JP up at um at the Secretary of State's office. And like I said, I will tell you a, as soon as I know, this is a whole new issue because typically everybody votes on one day. Um, you know, your your appointed date that you do it, whether it's town meeting day or not. Mm -hmm. Um 
so let me deal with them on that. I will let you all know, um, Ethan, as soon as possible about that. And um, I'm assuming other than that, unless there's something else somebody wants to throw at me. Well, that you're yes, I, done with me. if I may, because the next thing on the uh, uh, our, our or this AOA committee meeting hot topic articles, um, 1B, because we, we found this to be a very important one. This is what you addressed before. It's um, Article 11 is confusing and conflicting. This idea of that the reports uh, govern us. Um, and I think it, it speaks to what you talked about, about the difference between these two uh, articles of agreement, versions of the mm -hmm. article agreements that are in the report. One, the warrant article, and two, um, the um, uh, the vote. Sorry, the voted article and the report articles. Ethan, um, I have one one logistics yeah. question before we move forward. Yeah, good. Um, so when I get that, Dina, I'll print it and sign it, and then um, I'll bring it to you, Lindy. Is that correct? Yes, Jenny. So you and I can coordinate a little bit, and then I can get it to Rochester on my way home and then someone in Rochester can get it scanned and back. Yep. Is that the best way to do that? Yep. Right. If you can have it, if, if, if it can, I mean, I would be, I would be able to be at, at SCS um, before four Lindy. Is that, is that too late for you? Uh, so I'm in the limbo of virtual from home and virtual oh. at school and Thursday I have several meetings that'll keep me on until like 5 30 or 6 so I was hoping to be home for those uh mm -hmm. while I have that luxury um okay so can we, can we, we sorry, when you, when it sounded like you were getting it from Jenny I thought you were coming in I am I, I'll be there most of the day I'm just trying to be home before my 3 30 meeting so I oh, can okay. be home for All that right. two hours what time but you and I can figure that out, Carl, separately. Right. We don't need to do it now. I'll be there before that. Okay. I'll send you an email. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so this, this, Dina, this is just, I, I do want to let you go, but I also just think that I want to make sure that everybody understands, and this, Justine, what we were talking about before, this distinction between the two versions of the Articles of Agreements. And I really would love from you, Dina, obviously the uh, amendment takes priority, but I would love from you some outline of how they are different and how they are different and what are prerogatives of the board uh, in particular. Okay, so I mean, I can, I can do that. I mean, basically you're asking me for a legal opinion of what the effect is of what your warned vote was. Um, to the underlying articles of agreement and who has the the issue, uh, who has the power, I guess. Um, I can do that. It's going to take me some time to lay it out for you. Um, it's not, I, I can say it, but there's some things I think that you're all going to need to understand. I because, think there's because, no rush. I think there's no rush on this. This is, but this has been, as Justine, I'm sure wants to talk about right now, this has been a major underlying confusion um, from people who have been looking at our articles ever for mm -hmm. years now. And I think the more clarity we can give this, and so time to do it right is definitely important. Uh, Justine, what did you want to say? Yes, I just want to uh, pro propose a, a, a clear question based Good. on Article 11, which states that the report, the provisions in the report and formation plan shall govern the, the unified district. And with that being stated in that manner, uh, my question is what are the implications, um, the legal implications of the board then changing this plan? Because it kind of turned, you know, is a conundrum because we, it, whatever the plan is, the board just decides whatever that is and that falls under Article 11. That's how I understand the meaning of that. So just to pose that and include that in your response, that would be helpful. Okay, I, I, I can do that. Um, I can answer number six on your future action items very quickly, by the way. There is no um, alternates and there are no proxy votes. Okay. 
So I can, I, I mean, if these are questions that you want me to take a look at, by all means, um, yeah. I'd like some time to take a look at them, if that's okay. That's um, fine. Yep. These are, these are, as we said, these are the issues that came up as we started talking about the articles of agreement. And um, um, obviously, yeah, we, we're, we're going to sort of talk through them um, for the rest of the tonight, but I just, because 1B, Article 11 was the next one. But I think it sounds like we're going to wait for your full report on that. And that's going to be very important to the both to the AOA committee and also to obviously the board and to our communities. Right. So one of the first things I would do and 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 and, and I and I say this because it is confusing and conflicting is that I think I, I would I would come up with different names for them. You have an Article 11, which is in your Articles of Agreement and you have an article 11 on your warning. And, and those are two very distinct issues. Yep. And so referring to them both as article 11, and I understand very confusing. that that's where some of the confusion came from. So, um, you know, in terms of the, I, I guess I would say, you know, the board authority, the provision regarding board authority versus your article 11 in your articles of agreement. I mean, that's that's basically what I'm telling you is the simple need to flesh that out better for you all. So everybody is on the same page about that. Can, uh, can you, but I think that's part of where and it just may be because of, of, of my profession where language can confuse people. Oh, this is we have people who are paying very close attention to language um, looking mm -hmm. at these documents. And that's why we we pulled them apart and asked the questions. And I think the more clarity you can give us, the okay. better. And, and we've also thought that it would be very useful to um, have this where these articles are posted on our web page, a little bit better identification. So if you could actually do it on the, with the articles there, you know, or, or annotate the articles in some way, I think that would be very useful. And we might even put that up there. Um, we might decide to put it up there for clarity because People looking at these articles, I mean, even, you know, select a select board at Stockbridge looked at them and was like, huh? Right. Yeah. It's, no, it's I, not I, I understand it, which is <clears throat> which is why I will lay it out. I, I can lay out what that means for you all. Great. That would um, be extremely useful. And I will try and not do it too legalese because then everybody hates me. Um, yeah. Well, as long as you explain it, we'll understand. Justine, you want to follow up? Yeah, one more little thing. There were there were some questions from community members and board members about um, the Board of Education and their interest in our plan and um, whether or not it will affect anything if, if our plan changes too much. I just think it would be helpful to have Dina to speak to that or include it in your response. Okay. I mean, I can, as I, I mentioned before, the, the one place where when you're going to do your the amend your articles of agreement that goes back to the State Board of Ed is maybe in one of your questions here, if you were talking about, uh, it may not be, and language again is important, number two on future action items, because I'm not quite sure what realign, realignment of grades means. But if you were to decide that you were um, uh, going to do, uh, you guys provide up to grade six, right? And up to se a seventh, right? Seventh then has school choice. Am I correct on this sure. uh, recollection? Sure. Okay. Um, if you were for some reason going to decide that you were not going to be providing an education or maintaining that, that may be something that triggers the State Board of Ed um, to, to be able to do, you know, if you decided you wanted to go completely school choice, right? And hey, because, Dina, uh, the example that's been laid out there is this, op this option um, was the idea of splitting the grades between the campuses. Uh, mm -hmm. the, Highly hypothetical, but the idea of four, five, six, maybe Stockbridge, you know, pre-K through something, pre-K both places. I, it's it's a plan that's been talked about and is quite a hot topic item. Would that, do you think, um, 
be that I don't I don't that that I don't believe, but I, I will firm it this up. But I'm going to tell you, I'm 98 percent, 99 percent willing to say that is not going to be something that the State Board of Ed is going to be. Um, curious about or looking at what you're doing for your articles where that may become a bigger touch point for you all, maybe whether or not the board can, that's a board authority issue. And I will lay that out for you, whether or not that's it is. The, that's the essence of, um, uh, of two is, is wanting the public to have some say over that. It's so, having say about that. Okay. Um, can someone please send me this? And, and yep. if you have a list of questions that come out of your further discussion that are specific and can give me some more information on this, um, that would be helpful for me. Um, okay. I'll send it to you right now. Okay. And, and, and add any fur further questions. Yeah. If there are further questions that come up during your conversation, by all means, please let me know. Um, Carl, yes, go ahead. We transition to Dina talking about providing analysis of the uh, existing articles of agreement. I'd like a, I'd like us to, to to get her opinion on Article Five, specifically um, uh, uh, Clause B and Clause D. This is the surpluses and debts and special funds. Um, the articles seem to say that um, you know they acknowledge that we have. Um, restricted funds coming in and um, from from both districts, either um, appropriately because the, the the Stockbridge district apparently was made properly and had uh, restricted funds for the Stockbridge building, the Rochester um, restricted fund that was supposed to have been created with the uh, sale of the Dandelion uh, uh, daycare, uh, never really got the uh, never really got put together and, and ha handled properly. So those funds are kind of are, are kind of limbless, but both B and D talk about um, how these funds will be used for their uh, uh, pre-unification intention, and I want to make sure that we understand and, and that our taxpayers and everyone and our communities understand how that is. And then, secondly, if something is is deficient in in the articles of agreement or deficient um, in in the current situation. What would be the appropriate task to, to, to restore those funds to their appropriate restrictions? So that's uh, Rochester so uh, scholarship funds and uh, Rochester uh, uh, real estate funds and, and Stockbridge, you know, 100 some whatever building funds are all uh, appropriately protected and, and assigned, uh, uh, assigned adequately in the Articles of Agreement, um, you know, because... I worry that as I look at that, and that as we, we we talk about some of the some of the concerns that 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 we're finding looking back on those documents, and knowing that those funds, at least on the last report that I got from the business office, were kind of all commingled into into a district um, restricted fund. Knowing how to, to 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 separate that out and give them to the appropriate places would be a great piece of analysis. Okay, so can I also ask you a question? <laughs> um, Stockbridge has a scholarship fund which was set up as sort of a trust it initially. Was it a trust issue? No, that's or, Rochester. Rochester has a has a scholarship fund that we think is held by the town, and Amy's one that could jump in and correct on that particular piece. Um, Stockbridge came into the came into the to the merger with uh, a six figure uh, restricted building fund. We had been accumulating be because of our conservative budgeting. Uh, and 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 frugal administration. We we had been accumulating uh, surpluses into a building reserve. We used a bunch of that to pay for getting our uh, completely repairing our roof, replacing our furnace. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Jim Shans did yeoman work, fixing our incredibly out of code uh, kitchen hood. Um, so we 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 went through that, but. And, and Article Five was was written definitely with the intention that each each facility got what it, you know maintain control of and restriction to the funds that their taxpayers had allocated to their to, to their facilities. You know the, the Stockbridge didn't know didn't didn't have any financial interest in in in, in dandelion daycare. Um, you know that money was supposed to go into into a restricted fund for for Rochester, and that because of the timing of the closing, as I recall, or 
some deficiency in what the business office provided as a motion that the board, I don't know. It was, it was complicated and it became kind of a, uh, 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 it, it needed that, that definitely needed a resolution, but the Stockridge piece, the Stockridge piece, um, seems to be still kind of commingled and understanding how article five works with that and how we can, we can, we can cure article five to, uh, to make, you know, the restricted funds be attached to the places they are, that the Rochester uh, scholarship fund is attached to the places it is, that, you know, the, 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 the Stockbridge um, funds that are held by the trustees of public funds are, are, are used, you know, the, the, their restrictions are respected around their use around Stockbridge students, so on and so forth. Okay, so what would be helpful for me, and I think Amy, and I probably from about a year ago have some emails on some of this um, and I will go and look about it um, at least on the dandelion side of it. Um, what would be helpful for me, Carl, is honestly having a list of what the funds are that were there. Amy, or, you, Amy you have that for Rochester, certainly. And I don't, but and Carl, would you have it for Stockbridge? Uh, I have some information. Tara has all the information. All that information was in the uh, was in the uh, uh, study committee's report. So that was all okay. run through Dina's office. So so balances uh, 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 were certainly available. I mean, we all reported about it then. So you, you you had you had some basic information. So I'm sure when you go back, you'll you'll find that. But and and. You know, I'm not sure that, that you know that this is separate from the the articles we considered earlier. But like I said, as we're analyzing the problem, the, the the problematic articles of agreement, I think five. You know, it, it's pretty clear on where on, on the fact that debt is 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 just dumped into the district. Um, Pre-existing debt was just dumped into the district. But understanding how the the, the restricted funds are managed is important. Okay, I I I I understand what you're saying, and you're probably right for the first go around that study committee did have a lot of language, I think about at least laying out what it was in the presentation. Um, what I was also saying was more along the lines of, um, you know, if there is something, uh, you know, Mrs. Smith passed away in 1815 and she established a trust for, you know, for the benefit of the Stockbridge School for, you know, buying books for kids. Like, I, that's what I'm curious about if, if that exists, but I can talk to Tara. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's no, the, that, that trustee money um, is managed separately by the Stockbridge trustees, at least in Stockbridge's situation. And I work with Bill Edderton each year to talk about how that money is spent towards. Um, Stockbridge students. So it's managed completely separate. And the only thing okay. that happens is the check that is deposited into the account. And usually it matches right up with an invoice that's being spent on, at least since I've been there. On um, last year, it paid for new books in classrooms right. okay. for um, Montes and Finale. That's just one example. That that nine thousand dollar transfer annual transfer on our budget also comes from the 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 Stockbridge. Trustees of public funds, and that's the Whitcomb. There's a, a Whitcomb trust. You have that information. Um, it's eight hundred some thousand dollars. I want to say probably bigger now. I haven't okay. seen statements in in, in 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 a few years. Um, okay. And that I just I don't mean to interrupt this because I think this is important, but I think we do have a lot of other things we want to talk. A to. Absolutely, and 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 yeah. so I'll circle back to my initial point: is I would like a detailed analysis of of okay. Article five in the RSUD Articles Agreement 10.5.17 doc, Good. which is what I'm looking at, that talks about the um, surpluses and debts and special funds Good. and getting some clarity around because the language, again, indicates it will be used for said purpose unless otherwise determined through appropriate legal procedures. The used for said purpose legal language is really pretty much kind of really vague and mumbly. And mm -hmm. Business office is reflecting that according to what the uh, the uh, auditors say as a commingled fund. So understanding how to cure that to, to meet the intent of Article Five in the in, in the in the Articles of Agreement, um, and 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 the steps we should take um, to, to to do that is, is is what I'd be interested in seeing. Just like I'd like to see the clarification on Article Eleven. Good. Okay. 
So if somebody can just email me, Ethan, after you all are done, basically a listing of everything that you, you all want from me, I will work through it. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> if that makes sense. And, and it may be, uh, Jenny, if you're taking meeting minutes, if you could make sure that I get a copy of the unapproved minutes just so that I'm, I'm aware of what the discussion was, that would be great. Yep, we'll do that. Thank you very much. Good. Yeah, I, I, I don't have a problem, you know, going through. And if you all come up with more stuff that you need me to go through, um, I think, uh, you know, knowledge is not a bad thing. So. This speaks to our, our action item, too, but we'll get to that in a minute. Charity, do you have a point of clarification? Yeah, I do, because this is one that I brought up and it adds right into what Carl said um, in our committee, in our very first subcommittee meeting we discussed this and the long and short answer of it and I do not mean to be derogatory but it is basically the bottom line it is the board the RSUD board's responsibility to demand of the business office full and accurate accounting of the two article items that Carl is mentioning and when we were in that first committee meeting the subcommittee meeting um, that's kind of where we left that one was that Tara at the board's direction needs to provide proper and accurate accounting of why those numbers have not been shown accurately or there is question as whether they have or not yet. So uh, my understanding, and Dina, correct me if I'm wrong, it is the board that has to demand that of the SU business manager. So I, th I think we did talk about this in your in, in the committee meeting and about to and it falls under I think the future action item number five I may have talked about it um, which is that to the extent that the board feels that it needs additional information that is a request of the board through the superintendent for his business office to provide more information um, that's not something that has to be put in your articles of agreement. I want to be very clear about that. That is um, it, the same way that you would ask if, if you felt that you needed to drill down on on testing issues to the extent that it didn't you know, violate confidentiality of individual students. The board has the right to ask for the information that the board believes it needs to have to, to, to manage it and do its business. So, yes. Um, you know, where that breaks out, I, that's a discussion between, I think, the board and the superintendent. That doesn't, I, I don't believe that involves me from a legal perspective. That's how, you know, that's the board asking the superintendent for information. Well, I, I have a note, and I think it's, I think we've, like I know, in, we've been relying on Amy for a long time to sort of be working through the, some of this stuff um, and maybe that should be coming from the business office because they're supposedly managing the finances. Um, good. Um, great. We will look forward to that report on five from you, Dina. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I think all of this, Carl, what you just brought up, um, uh, Charity, and, and, and the rest of this as we are going, we're going to go through um, all of these things and ask any questions is this idea of um, action item number two, to set in process a regular evaluation of merger and an evaluation of the articles committees that creates standards and questions and has a report due to the public on a regular basis, one year, two year, three years. Obviously, we have started this articles of agreement committee. It was created um, you know, a little bit in the sense of what's happening with the um, merge unmerge vote coming to a head in March. Um, and that we take some action to maybe uh, change some minds about their vote. Um, but I, I think what's really clear is that this is something that needs to happen ongoing so that we all, because I, I really feel very strongly, I don't understand. Um, I didn't understand these articles and I sort of let that ride and that's not acceptable. We really need to, as a board, need to know exactly how our articles work, how, how they make sense and all of that. Um, so I guess what I'm looking for tonight, and the idea that these would be two different things. Oh, by the way, Dina, I, I mean, if you want to stay on, great. Um, there's obviously going to be more questions, but I, I think, I think we're done with you. 
I bet that would be awesome. Done with me. <laughs> Off with my head. Yeah, I think we have plenty to I might have. I might have chosen a little more politic verbiage. But <laughs> who are you kidding, Carl? You would have said off with my head too. No, I'm fine with that. I just did. I just needed clarity whether or not you needed me to stick around. I'm. No, I think that's good. And I think that us looking through each item as we go and say we need more information from Dina on this is a very useful framing up um, item for us tonight. Okay, so I am going to leave and thank you all and have a very good night. Thank you, Dina. Thank much appreciated. Time, Dina. It was wonderful to see you again. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well. Yes, it was nice seeing you all. So um, uh, what I would love from the board tonight is, is a, a motion for both of these, but let's talk about this a little bit more. Um, obviously, the Articles of Agreement Committee, we've created ourselves, our, 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 our mission was to look at the articles and improve them, help to improve the strength of the merger um, as we looked at them. And obviously... One of the guiding principles has been clarity. Um, um, are there changes we need to make or are there things that just need to be clear? So we've been doing a very, you know, I think quite thorough job of that. And I think we all agree that it should continue. This idea of valuation of the merger is kind of a different thing. Um, and that is that I think this is something we need to come up with as a set of standards. How do we know this merger is working or how do we know it is not working? And I, you know, I think we could say, oh, well, you know, it's, it's classes going together on field trips back when we could do that. It's, um, you know, it's sharing faculty, but I, I, I think there's actually tougher questions than that about whether people feel this is um, something, you know, how do we evaluate this? How do we evaluate the merger? I think is the real question. Um, and I would like, I would open that up to questions of how, I think what we need is a set of standards, um, sort of like what we're doing for the uh, approval um, for Jamie, where we had a whole list of how is the superintendent doing? I think we could really do with having a committee that set up a series of standards for how do we know this merger is working? And um, uh, that would be another committee. Hopefully I would not be in charge of that committee. I'd actually think the administrators should be part of that a little bit because they understand this. So, you know, a lot of what goes on in between the two mergers. Um, but let's, so I'm opening this up for discussion right now. Carl, you have your hand raised and then I'll go around and see what people have questions about. Um, yeah, no, I think, um, I this kind of this this kind of jives with uh, some of the like strategic plan strategic planning five year stuff that uh, the VSBA talked about where you kind of need to have a rubric for all your stakeholders for your parent for your taxpayers for your uh, students for your staff and faculty you know just kind of. You know, because because all of those communities have different ideas of of of, of what is successful. What a successful school is. Yep, yep. And you know, I would really love us th this plus some sort of some sort of you know marketing, um, you know, communication outreach effort to let people in Pittsfield and and Granville and Hancock and and in our communities know what we're offering. I think. This to me is much more vital work of the board than 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 some of the 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 the, the issues we've been wrestling with, because you know really at the end of the day making things you know making things work making this a school that a parent says I want to send my kid here, you know I want to move you know I, I I'm moving up from Massachusetts I want to buy the house in Rochester or the house in Stockbridge and not the house in Barnard or the house in Sharon. Um, you know, I think, and, and, and I think, you know, the marketing piece is secondary to having, you know, that successful that that, that successful school for 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 those key those key those key stakeholder communities. So, so I, I'm behind this idea a lot. I don't think so I'm going to chair the committee because I'm 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 way way over way way uh, underwater with my job right now, but. Um, I, I certainly would, would participate and give feedback to it. 
Well, I think that's that's what we have to figure out tonight for the because we have an articles agreement committee. All of us, as far as I understand, are, are willing to go forward with that. I think we need, um, you know, we ha we have a we have a vision of where we go. I think you know clarity and strengthening it. How do we how how do we do this? How do we how do we assign a committee and who wants who wants to do it? And if we you know if we punt it, well, that's another thing. You know, we have a bit of a reputation for pushing things down the road, and I think we need to be careful with that. Um, uh, and if if I mean, I would love to ask our staff anyway i want to get around to other people to talk yeah. about this i can talk for too long justine what do you think i know you were on the committee i was on the committee and i agreed with that uh, uh number two absolutely i uh something that carl mentioned about outreach something that's been popping into my mind is that we're hearing a lot of the same voices over and over it would be nice to find ways to reach out in, in other other ways through for this particular process to maybe hear some other voices. I'm not exactly sure. I don't have a bright idea on how to go about doing that, but um, I think that the committee uh, that has the job of evaluating should should be reaching, trying to find a few creative ways to reach out in, it, uh, in different ways. I don't know, maybe to hear some other voices than what we just hear all the time. The people who tune in, they tune in regularly and then a lot of people don't really know what's going on, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, Megan? Hi. Um, I think have, really trying to get a firm idea of, from our administration staff, students, families, community members without kids, with, you know, with, with kids is really the most important thing to, to understanding how successful a merger is because it's, it's, um, to go forward, I think that we're going to need definitely more voices to the situation. Um, I, I hesitate to to uh, to put myself. I, I I cannot put myself up to lead this. I we are uh, we are at a meeting level that is taking up a bit of time and also a job as well. Um, but I am all about giving as much input as I possibly can. Um, Lindy, let me, I'll get right to you. Oh yeah, go ahead, Lindy. No, it's fine. You could have finished with the board. I was just gonna say, I'm happy to participate because I really think it's a important piece of the process that hasn't happened yet. I think there's, it sounds like, cause I was not part of the Rochester Stockbridge community when you guys went through the study committee and, you know, the merger process, sounds like there were a lot of things presented to the board of ed in addition to what was in um, the Articles of Agreement. I think it's important to take the time and go through what those promises were. I've seen bits and pieces, I have to be honest. I would push it towards the higher priority level in my day. Um, and I think it's an important process. I don't think we can pick the outline and figure out what questions to ask and things like that until we all take the time to do due diligence whoever's part of this process to figure out what was promised. I mean, field trips are great. Well, Shared is, staff has been amazing, but I'm sure there were a lot more promises. At least I hope so. than those that items. On, that is on the agenda. Um, it was actually the next meeting of the AOA committee was to look at the 706 meetings and to look at all these things that were thrown out there as possibilities and 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 to evaluate them and to bring those to the board and say hey here's the list boom 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 of all these things um i i uh, but it so I'm this is something we're going to do we're definitely going to do so then in my experience Plus i would I say you would oh, take please. you would take those things and then you start to create your strategic plan around those and start we need to get a baseline of where we're at with all our stakeholder groups on those areas and maybe there's some others that were missed that were not presented or shared with the public that we would need to add to. And then we would start to create this, you gotta take the baseline first, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, and we need to figure all those things out of what all those pieces of the puzzle were. I can think of a few, but I, I know I'm missing a lot, so I don't wanna ramble. And then we get the baseline of where we're at and then we start 
showing evidence of other things because there's perception, there's reality, and then everything in between, which goes to Carl's marketing point too. And I'm sorry to jump in on, and as, as he jumps in again, but Lindy, what I wanted to, I just wanted to say that that point about baseline, I would really love to hear, and, and this is something that as soon as you said that, I'm like, oh my God, I have to interrupt. Um, I would really love to hear what you and Bonnie think or how you would envision what would be the perfect little 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 set of schools you'd be running here? What how would you see that be? You know, under you know, as we talk about our vision and our marketing ideas, you know, you guys are the people that are that are there. You know our parents, you know our kids. How should our how should our schools be? Bonnie, you've raised your hand. Nope, you're muted, Bonnie. Bonnie, you're muted. She's saying really important things too. Bonnie, you're muted. There we go. Um, Carl, I'm not ignoring your question. I want to I wanna think on that for a bit, but I wanted to go to something that um, Justine said and then tie it to something that Lindy said. I think this, this type of initiative could be really, really powerful in a school or it could be absolutely devastating for a school. And I think where it becomes powerful is if we do the work up front. I think Lindy called it baseline. And I think Justine said, though she said she didn't have a brilliant idea, that we'd have to figure out a way to get all the voices. Because you could judge the success of these little schools, Carl, that we'll be running. You could judge them from multiple perspectives. And if we don't agree right from the beginning, what's the lens we want to use? Some people would tell us we want to run schools that are that are um, as inexpensive as they possibly can be. Some other people would say we want to have a school that's outstanding in this or we want to have a school that's outstanding in that. I think this could be really exciting work. But what I would strongly lobby for is that we do the work up front so that when we're done with, some people have called it a rubric, some people have called it a vision, we're crystal clear that this is what the two communities want for their youngsters. I, I'm, I'm gonna go on a little bit of thin ice here. I'm not criticizing, I'm just making an observation. We, we don't, in my opinion, talk often enough about our kiddos and often enough about our schools. We, we've kind of been enmeshed, as we know, in, in a number of conversations. But I think at some point soon, we need to get back to talking about our youngsters and the hopes and dreams that the Stockbridge and Rochester communities have for their youngsters. And I think that is really the essence of this document that we're talking about. Uh, Megan. I'm good, thank you. Uh, no thoughts? Do you, did I, I ask just, you? That's you right, already asked. You already asked. I asked you already. Jenny. Yeah, I think I agree with everyone. Um, I don't think I, right now at this moment of time, could commit either two or four being on the committee, but I think that everyone's made some great comments, and I think that it's, definitely something that everyone would have some enthusiasm over, especially the public. And Amy. Excellent. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm now on my phone. I've moved to a lot of different mediums tonight to try to continue on with the meeting. Um, I, I, I don't have a lot to say because I kind of need to ingest all this right now. Um, I really you just said really means a lot to me. Um, and so I, I do think that going forward, we need to do this very wisely and thoughtfully. Um, I, I do see that um, evaluating, um, you know, slash celebrating uh, the merger is, is an important piece to really understand what we, um, what we can do, what we have done and, you know, what the future should look like. Um, I do think, I, I think that is, is important. And I guess that's all I'll say for now. Thank you. Well, of course, that's all, you know, I love it. It leaves us without a committee. <laughs> um, not, not from you, Amy. I'm just saying for all of us. Uh, uh, I, I know. I, I'm, this is, I, I, again, I, and I know everybody's feeling busy, but this is, you know, 
this is one of our recommendations. Now, I, I really think this idea, I mean, I can, personally, I can look at this list, parents, taxpayers, students, staff, uh, administrators, uh, I, 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 can, I, can, I can have a pretty good idea about being several of them for one, um, I can have a pretty good idea what the baseline is for some of these people. And I think that's a good way to start looking at it. What from a taxpayer who has no other involvement, um, how, how is the merger successful for them? Um, for a student, you know, how is it successful? I don't think these are, I don't think these are esoteric questions that are floating out in the ether. I think they're right in front of us. And, you know, if nobody's not going to do it, well, then hell, we have a committee and maybe we'll do it there. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take this on um, because, um, you know, I, I just, uh, you know, I, we, we need to do, and I know people are busy, believe me, <laughs> I know how hard it is, but uh, uh, we need to do this work. And if, and, and, and this is, part, it isn't, it, uh, I guess I, I just don't, I don't see being on the board as just necessarily you show up, you know, once a month. Um, so I do want to just I, I want to push people a little bit that this is the kind of work that needs to happen. It, it can be flexible. It can work. It, it, you know, it's, it's how you make it work. Um, but if we really want a successful school, um, we have to answer these questions. We can't just we can't leave it. And, and, and as we say, we, we have a reputation for putting things down the road and say, yeah, well, that's a great idea. Let's not do anything about it. Um, so. I am challenging you all. Uh, that probably will shut everybody up nicely. Um, so, um, uh, but you know, this is this is this was not this was not a future action item. This was an action item. Um, I, I think the AOA committee um, will certainly keep meeting, um, and uh, and maybe we will take some of this on. I I would I would like to charge our administrators with at least an outline of this, I think you could certainly look at our staff, our administrators, our, you know, and come up with some rubrics for us. Um, ten. So Ethan, I, yeah. I'm gonna be rude and interrupt. I'm, I'm in, I think it's really important. I think we've talked a lot about developing a vision and that we need to, and I know we've talked about it for years. So I'm definitely, or at least as long as I've been around. I'm definitely in. I think it's important work. I think it's how you shape our schools. So I'm really excited about it. I'm going to encourage before we get to the stakeholder piece, we need to go to what were all the promises. Yeah. And that's the okay. before and, we jump yep. steps. But if so, that means we need to go to the AO, you know, the articles of agreement meetings and talk no, about it for 20 to 30 minutes every time you guys meet, then that's what we do. <laughs> Well, I think that's that's what I mean. I think the AOA committee is getting a really clear sense of of what we what our charge is and what our parameters are. And I think you know this is it. This was absolutely the next thing on our agenda to do that. And maybe once we get that list, then we come back and say, okay, by the way, this is what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, are we doing this? And then everyone in the board can sit there and say, you know. And I really don't mean to, you know. I, it, it's just. I, I, um, I, I'm stepping up here um, and putting a lot of time into this. And I know you all are busy, but I'm putting a lot of time into this. I, it was very moving to me to pass that amendment just now because we worked hard on that. And I made a lot of calls and a lot of emails and a lot of days when I thought I was going to be doing something else. I ended up sitting on the email all day long working on these things. So I just got to say, this is my level of commitment here to our schools. And I challenge you all to look at each other and you know look at your life and say where can i find a little extra time because that's what's going to take to save the state doesn't care about a small school like us we've got to save ourselves and so it's going to take work and if you don't want to do the work then maybe it is time for other people to take our place you know maybe that's part of what you decide and that's a perfectly logistic you know logical and and this is a lot of work but I am challenging you, and this is coming out of the AOA. We've got this work, it's right in front of us. We can do this, but we gotta step up. So, Tim, you've had your hand up. You have a point of clarification for us? 
Uh, not really clarification, but I was glad to see at least uh, that one get moved forward tonight. Good. Um, but I also would like to know if the board is looking at this budget and adding the transportation part that's going to be needed to do what you're just asking Lindy and Bonnie to come up with. Because that's going to be an important piece. That's going to be fifty, sixty thousand dollars that's going to be needed to cross transport between these two buildings. So, um, you know, we can all jump up and down with our pom poms and say this is great, but there's got to be movement forward and continue moving forward. And uh, we don't have to rush to stop what's happening in March in Stockbridge. We need to make sure that we can provide education to these kids at a reasonable cost that makes sense for everybody. And if that happens, you've got a year and a half to get the Stockbridge people to say no to emerge. And uh, I can understand both sides of this. Rochester people don't really need to be too worried about it because we're in pretty good shape with this merge. Well, but if yeah. we can get that high school off the backs of taxpayers, get the threshold further away from per student costs. Tim, Tim, I, yeah? I, just, I just, I want to hold off for a sec because we have more work to do tonight and this is sounding a little, it's, it's very important, but it's sounding more like a comment. And when Charity was breaking in, it was something that had to do right with what we were talking about in this moment. And I, do, and I don't want to stop you um, because I, I, I hear what you're saying. Okay, but, well then, well, if we're going to continue with the uh, uh, the Articles of Agreement Committee, yes, then you're putting more stuff onto that committee than what was our charge. And that was what happened with the uh, Building Committee too. So let's make sure that we don't do that. No. Nope. Okay get through one thing first no i'm not i'm not i'm not we're not coming up with these rubrics we're talking about we're talking about what we were already talking about which is charity mentioned last time let's go back and look at the 706 meetings let's, uh, you know and, and the notes and all that stuff that's what we talked about we were going to be doing next anyway so um i feel good about that um all right well then i think lindy has given us our charge for number two and that is that the AOA is going to come back with um, uh, uh, what the promises were for the board to look at. And then that's going to be a promise. That's going to be our, our baseline. And we're going to have to spend some time on creating this evaluation. Uh, and then we'll, we'll move from there. And I, again, I just, I, ch I challenge you people to step up because we, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the board chair and I'm doing the committee already on the AOA. And that's that's what I can do. All right. Um, and I'm volunteering. I'm volunteering uh, Bonnie to help, too. She's probably in it. I know she's in it with us. But I'm just saying that we usually volunteer well, each other I think, together. I, I, we, I think, we usually come together as a package. Yes, I understand that. Good. Good. Ethan, this is Charity. I just have a point of clarification. Yes, thank you. So in number two, where it states set in process regular evaluation of merger, mm -hmm. the concept behind that, and I'll openly admit to everyone, this was my idea and why I want to clarify it, was the intent I had there was to say, today, April 1st, we're going to start the process of evaluating the merger as it stands at this very moment. It is not, and it was not my intention to have this be a fishing with a group of people to figure out what's the mission statement of our RSUD. I just want to be extremely clear on that, that this was intended to put in place an evaluation process mm -hmm. because the current language in the articles only gets us to year five. This was intended to take care of putting a place, a process in place, moving forward eternally. Mm -hmm. And that it is a evaluation intended to evaluate the merger at the time of the evaluation on whatever set of time frame we decide to do it on and look at that on a continual basis. 
I just want that to remain separate from looking at what the mission statement, what the program guidelines or curriculum platform is of our school. Those are two totally so, different subjects. Yeah, just I don't think, Yeah, no, no, I hear you. I I don't see it as 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 those last things you just mentioned. Um, I, I I see it as very much, and I think we've talked about this, taking the 706, um, those things thrown out at the video evaluation, making a full list of those. And then, you know, and I think we're already doing this, taking a hard look at, at where the merger is now. That's really sort of what the AOA committee is doing. And maybe we're already doing this. Um, uh, I know when I hear people saying, well, this is about publicity and selling ourselves. I don't think that's, that isn't what we're talking about here. Um, we're talking about mm -hmm. being very honest about where, how the merger is working right now, as opposed to, is that is that correct, Charity? Ethan, if I can jump in for a really? second. Oh, no, really, I want to make sure I got her point. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You understand it, and I'm seeing heads shaking from other people as well that they understand where my clarification point is. And Good. yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't. This is this is you know this is a, a brass tacks look at where we are. What was, exactly? What was said? What was said? What's 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 in the articles what was just mentioned and and then put it out there and say right this is what this is supposed to look like um what does it what does it look like and put those two right next to each other right but to make it a, successful, it's going to be on, Carl, a Carl, living Carl. process yes. so that's why this was in this was my vision in asking for this was that it will be a living process because what school looked like for me when I had my 25 year old as a first grader is not what it looks like now for my youngest kids that are fourth graders. Mm -hmm. Everything evolves, there's no way around it. So we need to do this in a standard time frame so that we're capturing the changes of academic evolution, the changes of society, and is the merger at that point in time mm -hmm set up in a manner that is working and successful, or do we need to look at a particular piece of the merger and say, how do we make this one piece work better? And whether that's gonna come from subject matter from your administrators, from your families, from the state when it comes to academic standards, who knows? Because that in itself is why we need to do an evaluation on a continual time frame to evaluate those exact changes and make sure they're fitting the merger. <laughs> Now, Charity, just because you, you know, you, you were, you are the, you know, in some ways you're the heart of this committee, um, uh, the COA committee. I'm feeling like we didn't quite specify this clear enough. Like we should say, we should come back with a more clear, we want to report in one year. We want to report in two years. Um, uh, uh, and I guess that's maybe why I'm feeling a little wishy-washy and maybe why nobody's stepping up to the committee is that it's not really clear what we're, I mean, it's clear what we're asking for, but I'm not sure what we're asking for tonight. I don't think we're there yet, to be yeah. quite honest. Okay. I think we're at a point now where I'm going to be very frank, and I apologize if anyone's offended by this, but we need to decide tonight, are we going to put this in place? And then maybe the AOA committee decides, okay, here's what we're going to recommend the board say is the timeline and how often it's going to happen. But that I think is the most that we can go to start with, because as Lindy pointed out, once you get what that time frame is going to be, then you can start gathering your data to put into it. Look back at what else was promised. Mm -hmm. I don't think we can start this process with a 50 page long set of protocol. It's no. going to start out very basic and as the first time this evaluation process happens, that's how you're going to get the guidance you're gonna move forward with. In essence, this already is going to happen because in the existing articles, year five, RSUD board is required to do this. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So, so uh, what, well, then we're looking for, do we want a year from now? Do we want a full report? You've got a requirement of two years from now. Well, you I know. have to have one presented want, in two years. Do we want it in six months? 
I'm just saying, you know, maybe we want it sooner than that. It sounds like we do. In my honest opinion, and I'm sorry if, if anyone's offended no, no, no. again. In light of what I have seen over the past three years mm -hmm. for this board and how everything is turning out with timing right now, for you to provide a very good representation of what this evaluation should be in two years, you should be starting it now to present it in two years. I would suggest you have it presented at least six months before that two year deadline, which gives you 18 months from now, meaning you should start now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a specific challenge. That's a specific question that we're going to put up. All right, Carl. Okay. First of all, apologizing for uh, interrupting verbally earlier, you said use your words. And so I was trying to do that. Um, I was trying to chime in at the beginning to say that um, that, that, that point two to me says that, you know, the board is going to move to a continuous improvement model to instead of a here, we're going to set a three, a one year goal, a three year goal, a five year goal. We're instead going to move to, to, to a, 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 you know, a, a different model, the, the, the continuous improvement model. And I fully, fully support that. And what I'd like us to uh, figure out is taking that from, from concept to, 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 to policy. What is a what is a continuous uh, improvement model look like in policy, and how can we uh, put that forward onto our administration? Because I think that yeah, trying to say okay, let's wait till a problem develops, and then let's you know figure out you know over the course of a year how to solve it, instead of moving to you know more incremental, more more quick response model is is is, is important. Figuring out how to do that is should be our work going forward. Um, well, I think we have a very clear, will, will the board present to the public a um, comprehensive uh, uh, evaluation of the merger in 18 months? That's a, uh, uh, that's a motion I'll ex entertain. Anybody gonna move it? Isn't isn't that already in our articles of agreement? No, the two, five the years. Two years. The two five years is this is eighteen months. This is charity's challenge, which is to have it six months ahead of that. Okay, um, I I I I I would admit I, I would uh, support that if we if we did it to have it if we did it to have a budget cycle ahead of that, so that we we would be able to have at least one budget to when we identified some issues or some problems implement some sort of some sort of uh, attempt to solve them and at, at an 18 month interval you're looking at okay we found some problems and we we don't really have any time to adapt for the budget cycle to try to even approach addressing them so i would i would rather if, if 18 months means it means a year and a half i would rather move move that we we have that evaluation done in a year so that we have a budget cycle to be able to 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 address and adapt, and at least at least uh, you know present you say, here's our report. It identified these deficiencies. Here's the way we're addressing them in this budget, and then you know let's see where we're at for our five year plan. I would I would move it forward if it's only a year and a half. Okay, so we've got it up to a year to January 2022. Um, there will be a comprehensive evaluation of the merger presented to the public to the voters of Rochester and Sockbridge. What's our feeling? I would make that motion. Make that motion. Somebody second it. We can still discuss it before we vote. Second. Seconded by Justine. Jenny, what do you think? I think that I think that's a good point with with the budget cycle. Okay. All right. Megan I think that's a good goal. I think a year gives us a, a time to get it together. Um, it makes it more approachable to think about the committee being on it. And also it also allows for Stockbridge to go for their town vote, whether or not this merge will continue or not. Um, and I think that after that, we should be using our time to be really evaluating what we said and what we're doing and um, making sure that we're hitting all our constituents. 
good. Amy? Amy, are you present? Darn. I think we might have lost her. I think Amy said she was going between meetings, so maybe she's dropped off somewhere. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we can still take action. Um, uh, do we need a composition? I, I think this is something that... Um, all right. <laughs> I, I really have to stop doing this, but um, well, I, I'm just trying to see if I sit down with Bonnie and Lindy and set up a framework, a basic framework for this. And the AOA committee sort of talks about what the framework would be. Um, but I think actually, well, Lindy and Bonnie, how about, you know, can we charge you, can we charge you with this to come up with a basic outline? So can we just be really specific about the charge? Happy to do it, happy to work with Bonnie and do it, but I just want to be really clear. What do you need? What do, you need? Well, do, do we, are, let, let, we, we have a, we have a motion. The question. So I, um, I hear from a year from now, um, but I also hear like, we need where we're at right now. What was promised? And can where we, we are with those things right now, as well uh, as another. So I, I'm just hearing lots of different things. I think I have a pretty good idea in my head, but I just if my we my, spell motion, it out. my motion was intended to be a broad kind of strategic, overarching kind of conceptual motion, and it really wasn't supposed to be all about defining outcomes and, and ends and means and goals and SWOT analysis and all that stuff. It was just in general, can we get to where we have some sort of report at a year? Because I thought that's what we were asking for. I mean, I thought that's what the 18 months well, was asking for. And I said, I wanted a budget cycle in there. I'm, I am not interested or my motion was not intended to require specificity and, and, and detail it was more intended to, in, in, to, to, to advise direction and intent. If, if, you're, if, if you're taking it the other way, I want to withdraw it. Okay, no. No. That's why I asked. I just needed a one, we've talked a lot of different routes. So just if we can summarize what you're looking for, happy to help. But I just wanna make sure I'm on the right, we're on the right track, that's all. Carl, say, say it again, please. Or I said it um, that we were within by January 2022, the board would have a comprehensive evaluation of the success of the merger. Did I say that before? Jenny, can you tell me what I said? I'm just writing the specific words now as you write them, as you read them. I know I that's okay. That. That's helpful. Success of the merger, comprehensive evaluation of the success of the merger by 20, 20, 20, uh, yeah, January 2022. Okay. And I heard like, here's where we are. Here's where the deficiencies are. And here's the celebrations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, we'll, we're going to, we're going to, that's going to get filled out. We're going to know more. Bonnie, um, and then Justine, I think, was that order. Bonnie, go ahead. So just just a clarifying, uh, just a thought. How about if Lindy and I take a, sh uh, a shot between now and the next board meeting at drafting out what we think our charge is and then uh, bring it at the next board meeting just to be certain that we're not headed down a, a, a path that people are thinking that's not the path we want them to go down? So how about we sort of collect ideas, take a draft, show it to you, Ethan. You can show it to whomever. We can send it out to folks. They can, they can, you know, chime in. And then we um, have more of a conversation. Finalize the document. I agree. We need to be action-oriented. Finalize it next board meeting and then move forward. The reason I'm suggesting that is, is I'm sitting here trying to wrap my head around what uh, we're being asked to do. I I don't 
I don't think we're going to need till February 22 to do this. Um, How about? I, mean, I may not be thinking oh, expansively please. enough. Call it. Okay. How about I make oh, friends? Justine, and Carl, make Carl, please, please hold hold it till we get to the other people. Raise their hand. Thank you, um, Justine. Yes, I, I kind of want to bring it back to, I, I feel what we're voting on now is whether or not we're going to have some sort of form of evaluation. I don't think we're voting on what it's going to look like or who's going to have to do what in that period of time. I'm not sure who decides what that is, but I don't think we're deciding that right now. Okay. And I would like to know who decides that. What, what are, are Lindy and Bonnie supposed to do? What is the our articles committee supposed to do in formulating whatever this evaluation might look like? Who decides that? And my qu my well, we, question we also will. is that um, the purpose of this evaluation that is going to come ahead of the five year mark is kind of like a pretest for us. Is that the reason? That's my question, really. Um, my answer to that, my answer to that is uh, um, no, it's because it, we should be doing it. We should be doing it anyway. I, I'm not, I'm not focused. I know some people are focused on five years. I'm not. I, I'm, it's why we started the Articles of Agreement Committee. I knew it was a good idea. Um, it's why we, um, you know, we're, we're doing this work. And I, I just, I, I want to, I want to, I want a motion. <laughs> I want a motion. I want us to vote on something. Um, and, 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 we, and I think, you know, we said we're not there yet. I think Charity even said we're not there yet. We don't know exactly what this, what this looks like, but we want to we wanna put something out there and we want to vote on it. We want to make it happen. And I'm, I'm not going to let it not happen once it's, once it's out there. Um, so we have a vote on the floor. Um, we've had our discussion. I think we go up, um, we go up and down. Um, so Ethan, can I make a point of clarification, please? Yeah, charity, sure. So when I when I did this, when I asked for this, this was not an exercise that the administration is, that I had intention of the administration doing. Yes, you should get input from them, but it was directly for the board because in the articles, it very clearly through all of the attorney conversation we have had, it is the RSUD board's responsibility to make sure that the articles are being adhered to. So this is a, an activity that the board is supposed to be doing with input from all the various parties. You're right. It should not be charged to Lindy and Bonnie or whomever the administration is at any level. It is the board that should be charged with this or a subcommittee of it. If the administrators are part of a subcommittee that's going to do this, that's fine, but it should be chaired by board members. I hear just you. as the AOA subcommittee is. I, I just, I, I feel I very strongly about that clarification point. No, I hear you, I hear you. Um, and I think, I think the way to do it is if we don't have a committee, then we, we, we do a special meeting because that's how we've been doing stuff for a while. We have a special meeting where we sit down and we focus on nothing but this. Um, and I think that's the only way we're going to get, and that's what people can commit to. Obviously, nobody, wants to, nobody else wants to step up to a committee, but we can commit to, um, to, being, to being at a special meeting to talk about nothing but what are the parameters of an evaluation of the merger. And, and, and we can bring a lot of information to that from the AOA committee because we'll have looked over the documents. Um, and uh, um, I, think that's, I think that's the way we have to do it. Good, okay, I've, I've got that. And I hear you, Charity, thank you for that clarification because you're absolutely right. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna do us. A... Point of order? Yes. Again, first of all, when you ask us to interrupt you verbally, Please don't chastise us for interrupting you verbally. I didn't think I, mean, asked any, I never asked to be interrupted verbally. I yes, you did. You asked, you, asked to, you asked us to make our opinions known verbally. Oh, okay. If That's if I do that see because it. the raising hands didn't seem to be working. But well, in any case, if my, you do, it does, it, Carl, it does work. I'm seeing people's things when it comes up. Okay. Good. 
Would you know? I, I I will try to go back to using the raising the hands again. Okay. And, and, and getting noticed. Um, my point here is that I w I would like to offer a friendly amendment to the motion, which is that you know the comprehensive evaluation that we asked for a year from now would be subject to the recommendations presented by the administration. Which, as the person that made the motion, you know, getting to the, the, the point of order to offer the friendly amendment to, uh, to, a, to, to, to address the issues that was being raised was, was my intent. So there's my friendly amendment. All right, we have an amendment on the floor. Um, say it again, Carl, please. Uh, the original motion, which let's see, um, the, the, sorry about that. The, 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 the evaluation committee would uh, adopt the comprehensive, uh, the, that language, the comprehensive evaluation language, um, subject, uh, uh, subject to the recommendations of the administration. I was trying to caveat the, the, the original, uh, uh, amendment whose language I didn't write. I was taking from, from yours. To, to add in the, the, oh, the, the, the administration could produce a recommendation around how that uh, around how that evaluation would a take place and b what the outcomes they'd be looking at would be would they be too granular? Okay. Um, well, I think Charity's point is that we 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 take recommendations from all parties. We take recommendations from the superintendent. We take recommendations from the AOA committee. We take recommendations from our um, our staff. Okay. And then, then, then my uh, my amendment is with is irrelevant, and I withdraw it. And the original motion stands. Okay, good. Um, let's 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 vote on this. I think we're I, I think we're ready. Oh, Chair Justine, you have more. Sorry, got you. Just one clarifying question: If we're voting on this, we're just voting once. This will be happen in one year from today, and then uh, uh, maybe. It will be on a regular basis, or is that something we will vote on some other time? Well, I, um, every uh, year we we could have an amendment where we add in a special meeting um, that will be a special meeting will be scheduled to um, start this process within the next month. No, I just meant um, the the evaluation process. We will produce it for a year from now, and yeah. then every subsequent year after that. Or what is the regular basis? for these evaluations. Good point. I think it should be every year we, sh we present an evaluation, but that is not part of the motion we're making right now. Okay. Word. I, I would make a friendly, a friendly amendment to add the word annual to the evaluation term. I would second that. Any discussion? All in favor, uh, uh, Megan? Oh, no, no, I'm good. You're good for that. Okay, Jenny? I am good and would also like to, um, I guess, kind of put, put all of our cards on the table. I'm not volunteering to be on that committee because I'm not planning on rerunning to be on the board in the spring. So I don't feel that that would be appropriate for me to be on this committee. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, uh, Carl? I'm good. You're good. Uh, Ethan is good. Amy, are you there? No, no, Amy. Okay, so the eyes have it. So it's now annual, a comprehensive value, an annual comprehensive evaluation of the merger to be, be presented January. Well, then it would be January because it's going to be every January. So we have to remove that. I'll, I'll, I think we're, we're loose enough here that we can just remove the 2022. It will be every January, presented every January, which will give us time to add it into the motion. Okay, are we ready to vote on this motion? Good. Uh, Carl. Aye. Jenny. Aye. Megan. Aye. Justine. Aye. Sorry. Sorry. Yep. And Ethan, aye. Okay. 
So I will schedule a special meeting to start this process. Okay, um, we are at two hours um, and we have gotten through our action items. Um, we have, Dina, when Dina was here, we have talked about some of these future action items. Um, I want to uh, bring them up um, and let's see what, what, what conversation we have here. Um, this is a big one, number one of the future action items. Um, majority vote is always unfair to the smaller town and uh, is waiting voting legal. And I've asked two different legal people and it's not. Um, you can't change the essence of a vote for, um, for big votes. That's what I've learned so far. Um, there's, I think there's more questions to ask about this, but I do think the issue is there of when you merge two districts, two towns, and one has less population, um, this is something we need to keep in our minds. Um, and it's been a big, it, it, it got, we prioritize these, by the way, in the committee, and why we put things one, two, three, four, and five, and six. Um, and I think that's, that's why this is here. It's just, to, it's, it's an underlying issue we have to remember when we create our budgets. It's an underlying issue when we do repairs. It's an underlying addition issue when we um, suddenly add $1,000 for something in one campus and the other campus, you know, it's, it's that sense of fairness is a big issue. Um, what are the comments people have on this? There's no action we can take on this tonight, but I would like to acknowledge people's uh, take on it. Justine? I expected um, maybe more information from Dina and I would go along with that um, for number one. This is a conversation she and I have had, um, um, and I've also with uh, the other legal representation in um, uh, in Montpelier that I've been talking to, uh, Bernie, I'm sorry, I don't remember his last name right now. Um, yeah, I, I, and I, I thought that he was gonna look at this document and provide a response. Um, I believe you, obviously, that that's not legal, but yeah. I don't have anything to say about it or. Well, I mean, to, is, is that what the board would like to do is to pass this document off to Dina to have her action? I mean, I think we haven't read the document all the way through as a board. And I think that's important that we do that, at least tonight, because um, we didn't do that last time when we said we were doing our presentation. Um, the next one, obviously, we, we can... Um, yeah, I don't know how to, I don't know how to do this. Whether we should go and 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 see if we have any comments on all of these, um, or whether I should read them out. I think we should go by one by one and then just um, see if there's any more questions that we'll have for Dina. Great, thank you. I think that's a very good clarification. Thank you, Jenny. So the majority vote always unfair to the smaller town. Uh, is waiting voting, weighted voting legal? And do we have any further questions? Um, there's another term, I think weighted is the idea that, you know, I, I don't know, I, that, this, is, this is definitely a legal question. Uh, Megan, do you have any further questions on that one before it goes to Dina? I'd like to hear from Dina. You'd like to hear from Dina? Yeah, I think um, I need to uh, definitely hear if it's even legal. And then I'm not sure exactly where I fall on this. I'd like to, you know, see where the budget fl falls out with. Are we really 50-50? I just, there's, I have some more questions. And I also, if it's, if it's not legal, then I'm just, I'd just rather wait for Dina to tell us if it's even something we should be talking about. Charity point of order? For clarification uh, I think we also had the question for Dina that was raised by a couple different people in public comment in the subcommittee of 
is there a different mechanism to voting that we're not aware of that could work around this? Such as there was the percentage based voting, like if it's over 51% in one town and over 51% in one in the other town, meaning both towns get a yes, does that mean a yes? Um, there was that piece that we wanted Dina to clarify as well and, and asked her if there wanted clarification on, is there another mechanism that would level the playing field more fairly that we're just simply not aware of? Mm -hmm. Got you. Good. Who hasn't uh, spoken yet? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm forgetting who. Uh, is Amy back on or is she gone? No, I guess she must be gone. Um, just uh, Carl. Um, the only thing. The only the only thing I, I I would add on terms of in 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 terms of waiting voting, um, you know, charities comment the whole idea of runoff. You know, could there be running off runoff voting if there wasn't like a a super majority? I mean, right now we're split sixty forty. So if we said that you know, some issue got um, more than 60%, it would win because that would, that, you know, that would be, that, that would account for, you know, the differences between our two towns. And if it got under 60, 40, it would get an automatic revote. I mean, right now our taxpayers could challenge any issue um, just by the, 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 the usual reconsideration laws, but could we, could we put together, you know, some sort of, structure or something that made made people feel more comfortable about that like like i said an ox you know if, if an issue didn't get 60 percent because that that's our difference you know then there would have to be like a, a runoff vote automatically versus a reconsideration appeal okay good i think these are all good things to present to dina um anybody not how did i not get to jenny did you speak on this Jenny, did you have anything to say on this, number one? No? Okay. She's there. Okay. Um, then I'm going to move on. Uh, we've got questions there for Dina. So can the public have a vote, say, in realignment of grades between buildings? Uh, Obviously, as I mentioned before, the example being four, five, six, um, and this, this is, I think this sounds like something the board could have a motion to say something about. Um, she, Dina said that was in our part of, um, uh, Carl. I can, I can say pretty definitively that, um, cause we talked about that, um, um, in the study committee, some in light of the uh, then the the time like um, teacher student ratio uh, rules and what that might do to our district. Um, no, the, the 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 board can ask the public its opinion in a non-binding resolution. The board can say, "Will the, you know do the town support um, hosting um, you know K through K through four? on the Rochester campus and five and six on the Stockbridge campus um, and get their opinion. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it, it would not be binding. Um, those kinds of decisions, just like where money gets spent in a line item, you know, public can't edit a line item on a budget. They can vote a budget up and down. They can't, the, the, the public can't vote on where the grades are educated. That's solely a, a, a decision of the board. But but we can make a commitment to making sure we get that input. We, we can, we can, but, but the, the, the public, the, the question is, can the public have a vote say? Well, well, I guess say, I was speaking more to the say piece of the question. That's the, the public can have a vote, the public cannot have a say. Yeah, um, so they, they can, we can, we can commit to, we, uh, maybe this should be rephrased. We can commit to seeking the public's opinion Okay. And we uh, absolutely should. Bonnie? 
Yes, I was just going to say the same the same thing. We have to be a little careful about about when we're asking for votes or things like that because those are they take a while to set up. They're legal. You can't do them at the drop of a hat. I don't think this board or any board I've ever worked with or any administrator would ever attempt to make this kind of a change without having a number of public meetings about it. And that's another way of seeking community input. I think that what the board is committing to is not making a decision without seeking input from all the stakeholders, parents, community members, et cetera. So I, my caution is just uh, being a little bit careful about how the board might tie its hands around asking for votes on a number of things. I no. think it's just, I, this well, just I think it's, the wrong word. I think Carl made that clear, and, and we, I'm, I'm going to make sure to ask. I, this isn't something that's voted on. It's something that is the prerogative of the board. Correct. I think there's nervousness that it could happen without full impact, you know, without full stakeholder input. Good. Uh, Justine. No comment. Thank you. Okay. Megan. I think it's very important to have input from the public about if we're going to re realigning grades. Um, I welcome this change. Well, uh, yeah, good. Jenny. I had to log off for a couple minutes because I lost signal. Can you state what your question was? Uh, yes. So this we're on number two and future action items. And it's can the public have a vote say in realignment of grades between buildings? Carl made the clarification that it is not a vote. We have to, like Dina said, we have to be very careful with our language. Um, they can't have a vote or say in this. Um, as Bonnie rephrased it, basically, we, we would get, we would definitely get opinion from all stakeholders. Um, and I said, we could get a, we could make a commitment that we would get opinions from all stakeholders, just so nobody felt like we were going to make any sudden decisions. Yes, I absolutely agree. I don't think that's, I think Bonnie had said, um, you know, that's not something that we, that we would just make on our own. So I agree with committing to getting input. Good. Megan? I just answered you. Good. Sorry. I'm getting a little foggy here. That's okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, I think we're clear on that one. Justine, you're from the committee. Do you think we've gotten clarity on that? Or do you think we Yeah, need... I'm all set on that. Okay, good. Um, number three is an amendment. And again, language, we'll have to know about this, that board must propose only budgets to stay under the threshold. And again, this is probably something we uh, need to pie Pass Dina, um, though I think she's going to answer everything on here. Uh, Carl, I'll start with you. Uh, no, I, I'm firmly against this. The way the public gets to, to, to have their input on the budget is to vote it up or down. I can see all sorts of circumstances where we may need to present a budget that goes above the threshold because of, of some sort of circumstance, some sort of thing we can't pivot from in a budget year. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's our job to make those tough decisions and we can certainly make a, a commitment. And in Stockbridge, we always have made a commitment. The one time we proposed a budget that went like, it, it, it was under a hundred dollars over, you know, they spanked us down, they voted our budget down and we said, okay, we hear you. And we redid it. But the board's ability to present a budget should not be should not be tied by 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 some sort of you know calculation. I mean, right now, how the state calculates a budget that is under penalty, um, you know, we understand. But should those rules change, that could really hinder the option, the you know the 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 options of the board. And lastly, and I think most 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 importantly, the board's job is not to pass a budget friendly tax friendly budget the board's job is to present and try to pass an education kid friendly student friendly community friendly 
what's best for the children friendly budget and saying, well, it has to, but we'll do that, but it has to be under, un, under the threshold. No, sir. You will not get my support on that at all. Charity, we had a clarification. Uh, yeah, I was just going to mention the fact that this was written in as a one year clause in the original articles. And that's what the basis of this was, was to make it a continual clause, a continual amendment in it. Um, for the simple fact that we've discussed a lot of stuff tonight about voting. And as we saw this year, Stockbridge actually voted down the budget both times, but because of the but the voting platform, uh, it was it got passed. So this was sort of looking at it as how do we find a happy medium and go in line with, as Carl himself pointed out, you know the tradition in Stockbridge that we don't pass, you know, over budget or over the threshold budgets. Justine, do you have a comment on this? Well, I, um, I, I agree with Carl, and I also um, think that the budget is voted on. If the voters don't want to approve the budget that's, you know, too high, that's above the threshold, they're not going to. I think it's, it's pretty... Um, uh, Oh, but this good. gets back to the weighted voting, you know, that that one town can't vote down this budget right now. Right. Yeah, I think those are two, you know, that uh, you're right. It does go with the weighted voting. Um, I think that it puts too much of a parameter on what might be needed at a certain time. I think that uh, I agree with Carl and that I, I'm not in support of um, it being absolutely necessary that it stay under the threshold. I think that's a good goal, but I think that's too limiting. Jenny? Yeah, I would agree with Justine and Carl. I, um, I think Justine made a good point. You know, I think it's definitely the goal, but I don't, I don't see this as something that, that would be an amendment. It's more of, you know, we you know, try our best to come up with the numbers and then, um, you know, the town, the voters are the, the checks and balances of it. Okay, Megan. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna, I'd like to leave the budget to be voted on at town meeting or the annual meeting. And I think uh, Jenny, Justine and Carl have made very good points that I agree with. Yeah, I think this goes, this sort of goes back to one, you know, number one on these uh, future action items, this idea. Yeah. I do just want to just uh, we have we have consistently been under the threshold. This will be our third budget cycle, I believe. So I think we're we've been doing this. I I think that's will always be our goal. But I think it's important to you know God forbid something was to happen that we can present something that's realistic and have a fair discussion with our communities at our annual meeting. Uh, Bonnie, would you speak to this for a sec? I saw you nodding your head. No, I, I was agreeing. I, I can think of a number of situations where the board could be in a very difficult spot if they committed to to always doing this. I personally think uh, most towns would vote down a budget that was over the threshold. Uh, but I think if the board takes too many of these statements and, and you kind of put them together, uh, let's say we had to realign grades in order to stay under the threshold. Um, where would that leave the board if we'd committed to, you know, we hadn't, we hadn't done the work yet around realigning the grades. We hadn't had the meetings. Uh, we weren't able to stay under the threshold. I just think you want to leave yourself the maximum ability to problem solve, um, in a way that you know is acceptable to your communities. I, I think locking yourself into this ahead of time poses some, you know, some pretty significant, uh, potential difficulties. Okay. Um, good. Let's move on to number four. Uh, in lieu of more equitable voting process, can a one-sided large bond vote be prevented? 
legal question, is a moratorium voted by the board a solution? A moratorium on large bond issues. Carl, you wanna start with us again? Um, this is a really, really good question. Um, it seemed like from what Dina said before, a bond is going to be a straight up or down vote. Um, I, 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 I'm writing an email to her cause I kind of think that, I mean, I could see that if, I mean, she made the point of, you know, the district owns, own, owns both buildings. Stockbridge doesn't own Stockbridge's building. Rochester doesn't own Rochester's building. But um, because of that dollar buyout, you could, they're, 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 you could see a scenario, and I'm not trying to propose this is This is hypothetical. This is how a, this is more of building a legal argument. This is not at all suggesting what could happen. But you could say, well, we're going to completely improve all these Rochester buildings. We're going to propose, propose a bond. And then Rochester votes it through and Stockbridge votes it down. And it goes through and the buildings get improved. And then the board says, well, we're now going to decommission the buildings and send all the kids to Stockbridge. And then Rochester get these two great new buildings for two shiny dollars. So, and I say that not, not again, and I want to emphasize this enough. I'm trying to go through the thought process of the idea that somehow bonding has to be equitable because the, the, the resources are shared when there's a votable out for a majority to take their assets and run, to vote to improve them and then vote to take them. So I think about wanting to get that legal question really, really, really clarified. Um, but I think that, you know, I, 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 I think that what our best effort should be is the state is already talking about um, removing any kind of bond money from penalty calculations. I think what we should try to do is maybe talk to our legislatures about saying in, in a union district, couldn't we have a way that if we needed to do some work that was specific to a Rochester building, we could propose it just to the Rochester, Rochester voters because ultimately that's their asset or Stockbridge voters and maybe see if we couldn't get something done in legislature in the next year. Um, and I am willing to take the, to take the initiative and leadership and, you know, I'll, I'll draft a letter and, and circulate it to the board and to you, well, first to you, Ethan, and we'll, we'll send it to Dina and maybe we'll see if we can't get something put forward because I really think at the end of the day, if our board could say, here's a bond that benefits everyone, we're proposing it to the whole community. Here's a bond to do this at Stockbridge facility because we know they can get that building for a dollar. We're going to put that vote just to them and then it'll just be taxed to them. Here's a vote for something that goes to buildings that are in the town of Rochester where they have the dollar buying option and we could, we could, we could bond it that way. I mean, well, I really think that would go a long way toward, towards making everyone felt, feel that they had equity. So I think, uh, Carl, I think the key part I heard is that you're willing to take this on and look into this. Yes, I am willing yeah. to. I will, I, I, I will commit to, in the next week, drafting a letter to our legislatures, you know, suggesting, suggesting a, a, particular, a particular, you know, cure, and I'll send it to you, and then maybe we'll, we will decide we want to send it to Dina, and then... What about, what about this idea of a moratorium? Because there was some talk that a moratorium might actually be something a, bo a board can do by itself without any support. A moratorium being that the, that the board would not offer any bonds? Any bonds for a, a given period of time. That I have a problem with because um, what, what if, you know, the, the, uh, there, there, there's a clog in, 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 in a propane line and something explodes, and Let's, we now have we now have all this this the, the, this stuff we need to replace. It may be more beneficial to replace it under a bond right away than under some kind of well, we'll just do it because if you run a deficit, you can the board can by vote of the board roll that deficit out into a three year loan 
or they can bond it out. So you can always bond it after the fact. Mm -hmm. But again, what I worry about is some of these things where the board might need the extraordinary power and we've taken it away because we're worried that the board might do something silly. Bonnie, is that your agreement? I saw you nodding your head. Yeah. Okay. I think I think any of these statements we're making that we we will never do something, each of them has inherent problems with them. You can think through a number of situations where you wouldn't want to have limited your emergency situations where you wouldn't want to have limited yourself to that. Yeah. And uh, just, as a re just as a reminder, um, towns have to, you know, approve bonds. So it's not like the board can go off and do something silly. I mean, I know we have this, this perception of, you know, one town can, um, or we have this, there is this reality issue where one town can outvote another one, but seldom do boards ever. I mean, I can't think of an instance where boards propose bonds around things that aren't essential, that aren't necessary. I, I agree. And I'm, I'm, I, I want to make it clear. I'm committing to putting together our case as to why we might, we might want to have three different bonding options, depending on our, our projects. Cause I think that would probably address concerns in a lot of other towns across Vermont. And I, I would write that letter and then we'd try to get it through the legislature. And I would, I would, I would spearhead doing that. I'd go to Montpelier if I had to or whatever. Cool. Thank you. Um, Justine, do you have a further comment on this? No, thank you. Megan, further comment? I'm okay, thank you. Jenny, further comment? I'm all set, thanks. Okay, good. Thank you, Carl, I appreciate that. Um, number five, this may already be happening. And I, we, we talked in the committee that we understand that this is happening, but could there be a budget coded at the expense level to reveal accounting at each campus, intent to reveal spending equity in real time at both campuses. And I think maybe Bonnie and Linda, you can talk about this, that some of this about identifying and in real time sort of when things are spent and when this happens. And certainly what Tara presented us to us at last board meeting in a real time, this is what happened this month um, is, is going towards some of that. What would be your comment, Bonnie? Uh, we uh, already have expenses that are um, accounted for in that in that manner. Um, so I don't I don't see that that would be um, a, a huge problem. I mean, it would be a conversation with Jamie about you know when when information could come out, what the timing is of the board meetings, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I don't I don't see a huge issue with that. I don't really know what. I don't really know how we would define spending equity. I mean, mm -hmm. Rochester spends more every month in, oh, let's say teacher salaries, because there's the difference in four classes and six classes. Um, so I don't know exactly how we would define uh, spending equity, but we certainly could show the expenses in real time for each campus. Monday? Okay, also, I, well, I want to share, so it's, it's doable. Keep in mind that Tara is going to get a different direction from the state about chart of accounts. I believe this July, but you should confirm that date. It just sticks out in my mind as that she's going to get a different direction, which means that it may not be quite as separated mm -hmm. as we're used to or easy to identify, but I could be wrong about that. That's a direction that she's following from the state. Um, if that were to happen, it can be done. I wanna caution the word real time. It's really about a two week delay because that's the cycle that of how things work and how things get paid. So um, when you say real time, I think of like swiping my debit card at the grocery store and it shows up in my bank account as an expense that I've spent that money and it's not there. We use the PO system to track those things ahead of time when they're paid for. So they are accounted for. So we're not overspending line items um, frivolously. It's not that it doesn't happen because things come up. Um, I think the other thing I want to share and reemphasize is Bonnie's point about we would need some clarification around equity because Rochester is a bigger population but it's not that 
people are going without in Stockbridge. It just costs more money to support more kids in Rochester. And that we've also streamlined our spending process and that it all goes through one person at Janet Whitaker. Uh, Janet Whitaker kind of organizes it all. So it's a little bit of a system where she sees everything and helps Bonnie and I see the big picture, meaning she's able to help that. So it's not like we are spending separately as entities and nobody's really seen each other, but we can share it and it can be detailed if that's what people are looking for. Good. Do we have other comments on this? Justine? Well, thank you. Oh, sorry, Carl. Carl, you had your hand up. Go ahead, Carl. Um, yes, thank you. Um, uh, I, I wanted to echo, echo one of the things that had been said earlier. Um, in general, you know, I, I think it's important that, that we stick to the, you know, um, population slash grand list slash whatever ratio. Equity is 60-40. It is not 50-50. Um, and that's really kind of kind of a rule of thumb. I would also um, point out that a lot of what I, I was going to mention the, the the centralized purchasing purchasing that, that you guys have been talking about doing through Janet over the last couple of meetings that it becomes hard to sort of split out how that goes um, between the campuses. I think trying to you know, monitor that and keep an eye on that and tag that as we can is important. But I think it's this real, I mean, we just at the last SU meeting had had kind of got the, the feel from Tara that um, as she was posting expenses for the SU, that monthly was kind of a little bit off, really quarterly was where you were gonna get your best picture. So the word real time, you know, should should be taken with a grain of salt. And I also, you know, would caution against us spending a lot of resources really trying to pin down out of that, you know, 200 box of crayons. Did Rochester only get 120 and did Stockbridge get their full aid? Where did they get 76? Or maybe they got 84 and they gypped some, some, some Rochester. So, Carl, so I do. Those are too detailed and, 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 and that we also try not to, to have it be real time. But I do want to share, Carl, on that same point. We do try to be that detailed. And the reason I say that is because I personally, and Bonnie supports me in this and sometimes mocks me a little bit. I personally view our school budget as you guys have essentially given us the power to responsibly spend on those line items like they are our own personal checking account. I was taught you don't spend money you don't have. And that's how fine level, because we can't continue, the budget that Bonnie and I inherited was not very detailed and did not share information. And the only way we can continue year after year to put forward budgets that have accurate money of what we're spending, we shouldn't be having these large surpluses. We should be as close to zero as possible every year, because that means we've done a good job budgeting and tracking what we're actually spending. That being said, we can't control healthcare every year and things like that, but we try. And that's how finite we are trying to be with how we spend the money. So we are not just guessing on numbers when we put forward numbers to you guys in a budget for the upcoming yeah. year. Oh, 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 oh no, no, no. I, I'm sorry. I, I apologize completely. If, uh, no, 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 no. I just want to say I appreciate that you no, don't want to say that nitty gritty, but that's how nitty gritty works. Oh, yeah, no, no. And, and I've been those meetings. You guys are laser focused, and that is freaking awesome. I love that. I just don't want it to be that, you know, we that 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 we're 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 slavishly tied to a 60 40 ratio if 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 Ro, if, if stockbridge needs 42 percent of the pencils give stockbridge 42 percent of the pencils that they need or actually give stockbridge 100 percent of the pencils they need and give rochester 100 percent of the pencils they need and don't I, what i was trying to get a, get away from is that i don't want us i think i want us to look at that ratio of spending 
and you know and, and appreciate the fact that Rochester is 60% of our community and Stockbridge is about 40% in grand list in student count in voter count and in, in th those ratios are pretty close so I, I want us to, to understand we're not 50 50 but that we don't slavishly have to tie to 60 40 I, I, I you guys are, are doing a great job with our budget and I'm, I'm I've been amazed at what we've been able to accomplish and I agree. I don't want to take taxpayers' money for a year while we hold it in a surplus that we can then celebrate how we, you know, we took too much money for, from you, and then we gave it back. You know, I, I, I don't want that mentality either. I want us to, to, to be able to be really accurate and, like, within 5% plus or minus because there's going to be variance. But, you know, I, I, I want to celebrate our attention to detail and not tie us to, to ratios. Got you. For the I, I, I think just the last thing I'll say, Ethan, on, on budgets is that um, I understand the need to, to, to keep things in perspective, but Lindy and I, we truly look at the Rochester Stockbridge kids as one group of kids. And whatever anybody in that group of kids needs, in that group of youngsters need, we work very hard to make it happen. We don't really think of our kids as two separate groups of kids. Um, so as you said, Carl, you know, Rochester gets 100% of the crayons it needs and Stockbridge gets 100% of the crayons it needs. I, I do think sometimes, and I don't, I don't mean to be critical of anyone, I do think sometimes that if you're a stranger sitting in our meetings, sometimes the way we chat, it doesn't sound like all these kids are our kids. It sounds like somehow we have this line of demarcation. Um, and I, I just have to say that it, it, it just is, it's just frustrating sometimes. Do we have further comments on number five, Justine? No, thank you. Megan? I'm okay, thank you. Jenny? Yeah, I don't, I don't see any issue with um, getting that information from the SU. I think that if um, I applaud Lindy and Bonnie for being so detailed in their budget tracking, and I think that if, if they're already doing that level of detail that we should be able to get it from the SU, and I do think that it's something that um, the communities have been asking for. And I, I agree, they, they definitely are all of our kids. Um, but I think also kind of um, going along with the, the community as well, I think that, you know, there might be some times where it might be good to know. I know initially when we first merged, there was little detail on, um, or we were able to get little detail on the, the fuel oil expenses and, you know, some of the telephone expenses. And I think that Lindy and Bonnie are creating a great system to be able, be able to track those. Excellent. Okay. Um, moving on to number six, and I believe that Dina answered this quite forcefully. Um, how does a target vote get broken in the school board vote? We've never had that yet. Um, but obviously as boards change, that could happen. But she said, you cannot substitute a board member and there is no proxy vote. Um, you need to be present to vote. So I, I don't know what else um, Denise can be said about that, but um, uh, it may be that, that, that there is some sort of agreement with the board of, of if we do have a tie vote, that we, we, get, we go back to work until we have gone one way or the other. Um, uh, I don't know, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this. If, if it comes up. Carl, you want to start? Um, sure. Uh, a, a, a tie vote means no action. It, you know, the action item, you know, if the, if the, the vote was to uh, put a new slide to the playground, there's, there's no new slide. Um, if the vote was to lay off uh, or to stop busing or to stop food service to save money, the food service or, or the busing stays. Um, a tie, a tie is, uh, I, I mean, and I've heard this at VSBA trainings for, for a decade now, a tie is, is, is in action. Um, you know, quorum exists to make sure that there's a representative body that is capable of voting. So when we go into a quorum, we have a meeting and we have quorum, that means we have enough people to vote. And that means the outcome of that vote is, 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 is a decision. Um, you know, 
there are certain actions um there are certain actions that have to be worn for a public meeting there are certain actions that have to be worn for a school board meeting for example policy approval has to be worn 30 days in advance um there's uh, sometimes personnel actions that have to be warned if they're being taken place in public um you know and in general it's bad form to uh put any kind of uh um pietro lynn the guy that is the lawyer that advises basically says he he said that you can but you should not put any sub substantive action on a on, on a an agenda that was not on the warned agenda so in other words when you make changes to the agenda you can't say hey let's put on putting in a pool mm -hmm. um something like that so i mean there are there are uh, uh, standard practices and, and procedures in place about, um, you know, uh, school board votes. But in general, the bottom line is, if you have a quorum, and there is a and there is a, a majority decision, that more majority decision stands. Um, you know, if there's a tie vote, whatever that action is, does not happen. Whether it's affirming something or denying something, it do, it it doesn't happen. And like I said, that was explained to me as being, like Dina said, straightforward and clear. Gotcha. Um, any further comment on this? Number six. Justine? No, thank you. Megan? Carl said it, said it very well. Thank you. Jenny? No comment. Okay, thank you. All right, in our pending list, um, I really, as I look over this, um, number two is something that we're already passing over to Dina and asking her about. And number three, I think the answer is absolutely yes. It's what the Articles of Agreement Committee is going to do. We're going to look at uh, issues, conditions that were looked at in the mentioned in the planning period and in the presentation and bring them back to the board and, and, um, and possibly look at them for reintroduction to the articles. The number one is, is really this key one. And I realized I, I realized as I look at it that I kind of dropped the ball on this. I did present this to David. The idea is that, that one of these articles, and this is very much a question for Dina, one of the articles um, basically talks about, and, and Charity, you may need to help me on this. Um, it, it talks about um, what what's in the building and that the school has to disperse what what it owns or the district has to disperse what it owns and that that somehow was conflicting with once we sold the building once we tra transferred the high school building in terms of how we owned it so that's really the issue that came up in this number one and we needed more information and i presented this to david at some point and um he got back to me and i realized now that he didn't quite understand what i was asking him and uh i, I that's where i dropped the ball a little bit um but, uh, uh, and I will try and find the uh, language here so we can talk about it. Carl, go ahead. Um, I'm a little confused. As I understand it, um, when we divest of the building, that's, that, that's the building that's not the lockers or the shop. I mean, it's the plumbing fixtures, it's the doors, it's the it's the light switches, it's the physical building itself. It's not the contents of the building, like the lockers or the desks or the shop equipment or probably the theater curtains and things like that. Now, certainly, as part of disposing of the building, the board could agree to say, yeah, sure, you get the, you know, you get the theater curtains. Sure, you get the shop equipment. Um, we, you know, there's, there's schools that want to buy lockers. We're keeping the lockers, but as I understand it, and we can, we, we, if, if this, you know, this, if this conflicts with anyone's memory, uh, memory, we should follow up with Dina, but, um, it, it's like a house sale, you know, the appliances and things like that are, 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 are sort of, are, are, are sort of spelled out, but they're assumed to, 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 to belong to the prior owner. So all the contents of the school belong to the school board. We can include them in, a, in, in, in an article of sale for the dollar, 
um, or not at our discretion. And certainly that's something we can negotiate, but those are assets of ours to include or deny at our discretion. Okay. Ethan, this is Charity. Yeah. Um, so, and Justine might need to help me on this one. So I think Justine and I were both the ones that posed this. It's not the language in the articles that was concerning. It's that the language in one of the preliminary documents regarding the sale of the high school had potentially conflicting language with the content of what Carl just stated. The articles state exactly what Carl just said, yeah. but the high school sale building or document has conflicting language that makes it sound as though anything in that building at the time of signing now becomes the property of the town of Rochester. And in one of the subcommittee meetings, Patty did say, you know, the town has no intention of, you know, st taking stuff from the school that they would want to keep for later on and an agreement could be made. The problem comes into if you have two binding documents that have conflicting language, that that's just a no, no. And I don't know much about law. So that was the piece we just wanted clarified was, is there conflicting language and can it be changed to more accurately depict the situation? All right. I'm going to, I'm going to sick Dean on that, put Dean on that. Is there conflicting language about property content ownership and and do we need to know something about it? Yeah, and just for the, uh, Ethan, this is Bonnie, just for the board's information, um, the last, I don't know, what's it been, year and a half, Linda, year, uh, given that those are still assets of the RSUD board, uh, we have been moving things around, some lockers went to Stockbridge, we move things around that we, uh, that we know we need or are going to need. So some of the, Tables, lockers, chairs, things like that have already come out of the high school and gone to our Stockbridge and Rochester campuses. Good. Charity, what is the second document you were referring to that has the conflicting information? I don't actually have a copy of it. It's a document that was presented by the board at a meeting, I believe in the December meeting as a general statement about the sale of the high school. Um, and I think it was a preliminary document. Um, and I apologize, I don't have it right in front of me, but we had looked at it during one of our subcommittee meetings and it just struck a red flag that there was, you know, possible conflicting language about the contents of the building. Was this the article that David had drafted? Possibly. It, I think it was in the December meeting. Let me let me review my email to him because I, I also think I, I think I had a pretty good handle on it when I referred it to him. Because I, I believe but, that in one of the drafts that David had prepared, it had talked about contents and I'd asked him about that and I don't remember it, if it had gotten changed. It's certainly always been mentioned in any of the dealings we've had with the select board that it's a negotiation issue, you know, that we're going to negotiate about what stays and what goes. So whether it's conflicted by something else, uh, you know, we need to, we can also send David on that and, and just look and make sure, has anything been gone out that could conflict with the idea that we can release that property? And I, I, can, t I can take care of that. Megan, you had something to say? Yes, I, I do. Yeah. Um, I guess when it comes, I, I'd like some clarity on what's being proposed to the to the select board for take for the town of Rochester to be taking over the buildings. And I do like the idea. It's more of a negotiation of what the contents of the building are, are inside the building, because I mean, all those things were purchased prior to the, um, the unification. So Rochester taxpayers paid for the contents of the shop equipment, things of that nature. I, I do think, People in town might have in Rochester might have some problems um, if it was just, you know, we only uh, the town of Rochester only got just the building. So I, I think having uh, uh, being able to negotiate the contents is 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 key. 
Yeah, it's, it's always been mentioned is that that would be part of the process. And we okay, would, we would get, I mean, that's, believe me, after, as we talked, you know, there's all kinds of negotiations that are going to be part of how the buses come in, how the entryway, all this um, shared easement, um, cooperative, all this stuff. It's a lot of negotiation that's going Absolutely. to be part of the process. Thank you. Uh, and, and that will be contents as well. Not to mention, you know, we are going to have to talk about if, if, um, the elementary still gets some storage space um, for like tractors and stuff like that, because that's what exists right now. Um, this is all part of the negotiations and we'll be bringing it to you. Um, Carl, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just I did. It's actually just, now it's piggybacking just on what you said. The, by, by negotiations, I do not mean, you know, adversarial nickel, nickel and diming each other. No. I mean, just just the conversations um, if the school district can get some money for selling lockers that the, the, the other committee might not want, let's do that. Um, if they want the, 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 you know, the elementary school has no need of a table saw. If they want that, cause they want to keep the shop space, they can have it. It's, it's more solving how to make these things work versus how either one of us can, can take advantage of the other. And this, and this, this item, you know, that we brought up here, it really was about, seeing some inconsistency and it takes a lawyer to look at it to see if we really have an inconsistency it may not be a problem so i will i will follow up and make sure i ask i asked um probably david is the one to really look at this and and, and make sure we're covered um that as far as i can see gets us through the list and i think we're ready for um our public comment time uh, we've taken our action. And then remember, we have executive. I don't expect this executive section to take a particularly long time, but I just, uh, we, we do need to get to it. So I will, um, unless anybody has any objections, I will now go to public comment. And we will start with Charity. Um, thank you so much for your clarity throughout this meeting. It's been very, very useful. I appreciate it. Um, do you have any further comment at this time? No, I think I've interrupted right along with the meeting. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Thank you so much. Joanne Mills from Stockbridge, do you have a comment? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, Amazing. God. It worked for I the God, first This is the first time, time in ages. Ever. I still love it. No, I don't have a comment. I, I thank the um, four people that worked really hard on it. And, um, I'm a, and uh, I would like to say that I heard last night at the select board meeting that um, someone from Rochester said, none of this matters anyway. They can always outvote us. So I'm just going to leave that right there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, jo Joanne. Uh, Karen Rubin from Stockbridge, do you have a comment? Uh, no, I'm a little disheartened by what Joanne just said, um, but no, I do not. Thank you guys for taking the time this evening. Great. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Megan Payne. Rob Gardner, do you have a comment? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. So uh, I have a speaker up, and I hope it doesn't give feedback. Uh, I just I just want to say thank you all for working so hard and make a comment that uh, about this entire process of, of reviewing the agreements. And that is that what was um, saddening to me was that it seemed to me that a lot of the impetus for this had to do with a lack of good faith, that, that wanting to question the budgets and question the voting and what if there's a tie and all this stuff is based on hypotheticals and fears that exist in Stockbridge and not in Rochester. The merger can't really work except in good faith. And, and I think there's a lot of good faith in these communities. I'm sorry Joanne said what she did because it makes assumptions that just aren't true. Uh, I think the merger has been a big success and I'm sorry about what appears to me to be a source of a, a lack of good faith. But a lot of what I heard in this meeting tonight from you guys had a really affirmed a sense of Good faith, and I appreciate that. That's all I had to say. Good. Thank you, Rob. Tim Pratt. Nope. You all set? Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, uh, Lindy, I would like to sit down and figure out how this Google Meets, I can actually see everybody. So I, uh, it, it, this time was much more frustrating than last time. I, usually I get all the active speakers on me. So, um, uh, great. Oh, wonderful. Uh, good work. Thank you all. This was, you know, um, this is, this is a beginning. 
This is a beginning of, of how we, we, we talk about this stuff. And it's important to air it. And I think it's really important to talk and that we all get our opinions out there about it. Um, so I, I thank you much. Um, I have my articles. I will be talking, I'll, I'll, I'll be talking to you all about a special meeting um, uh, to really talk about what we're to start this review process. Um, and other than that, if we have no further business, um, oh, so what am I talking about? We got an executive session. What else? Thank you. Um, I will uh, entertain a motion to enter executive session to talk about a real estate issue and, uh, and um, information from our lawyer and invite in uh, Bonnie and Lindy. So moved. Seconded. Second. Thank you. Um, Ray, are you giving us a separate? Um, or we? That would be my suggestion, Ethan. Okay. Thank you. So if everyone can, uh, in the meeting, we'll drop off. And then remember, we'll, we will need to return to this meeting once we're done with the executive session to, to close out. Okay. Thank you. Back from executive session, the RSA board, we have uh, a... Yes, we have our quorum here. Um, uh, well, the one thing we have to report is that an initial um, map, uh, wastewater map of boundaries was shared with the town and the town has submitted that to their planning board um, for uh, review. And we will be waiting for the results of that review, but the process is going forward. Um, and that's where we are tonight. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Our next meeting is? Uh, at this point, until I schedule that special one, our next one is the official, which is the February. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Why don't I have that right in front of me? Here it is. February 2nd. Thank you. Oh, I didn't get there. February 2nd, 2020, 6.30 p.m. via Google Meet. Very good. And now I'll entertain a motion. So moved. So moved. Seconded? Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Very good, good night. night. Good night. Thank you all. Much appreciated.